outside edge. Um, I was, one of the things we talked about at, at length previously was some of the site's topography and some of the site limitations that impact the development. Um, the comment was specifically with a car parked at the pump, the concern was you didn't have 22 feet. So that would be the pump, the pump, the curb protecting the pump to the outside curb needed to be upwards of, I believe it's 37 feet when you have a parked car plus the additional 22 feet for bypass traffic in two directions. Um, I talked about it with Mr. Greger. I actually talked about it with the operator of the facility. Um, then I got really curious and drove up and down the Silestine Highway, which is why I was a few minutes late. Um, none, of the, none of the fueling facilities on the Silestine Highway that I've seen offer that operational opportunity. Um, very typical gas station operations is with one car parked at the pump, it allows for singular vehicular traffic to bypass that pump. Um, can it be accommodated on this site? Yes. Are we adding additional pavement, additional impervious area, additional <clears throat> impact on water quality from paved areas and plowing and salt? By doing so, yes. Um, the operator who has, you know, multiple facilities throughout, actually they're an international operator, doesn't feel it's warranted. Um, our engineering opinion is that it's not warranted as either. Um, I defer to the commission whether they agree with Mr. Gregor or feel that based on what's being done. As I said, I looked at the two mobiles on the Silestine, the Sunoco, the Gulf directly ad adjacent to the town hall, um, as well as the Valero just down the road. Um, none of them can you park a car at the gas station and then still allow for two-way traffic. Um, I'm happy to discuss it further with the commission as need be. Um, the other comments that are outstanding for Mr. Gregor are really technical in nature. We talked about some of the stormwater stuff. Uh, quite frankly, we didn't, the, the way he phrased his question, we just didn't understand it and address it properly. We gave him some additional information, but it wasn't what he was looking for. Um, we can address that from a stormwater perspective without having any impacts on the design. So that's. So, so let me clarify. Thank you for that <coughs> summary. Certainly. And, and I appreciate you reminding us, because I was going to do that, that we left this, that there were a lot of outstanding comments. That's why we just didn't act on it last time, right? So everybody's directed to a memo that we got tonight, uh, dated January 3rd from the town engineer. And so, Nate, when you were just giving me that summary, and yes. basically there were two, two basic topics kind of outstanding. Were you referring to this memo? I was, correct. Okay, so you have seen this we memo you got today. Yes, we received this this morning. I actually, okay. again, I did speak to Mr. Greger uh, yesterday, so I knew what comments were coming. And, okay, well. and, and what he discussed were basically topics one and three in this memo. Um, I think topic, so topic one is the, the turnaround and WB50, correct. and um, specifically he was saying at a minimum, Please change the radii to get the WB50 in and out. Yeah, which, which I guess I could talk to him more about that. I don't object to changing the, the curb radii. I know the original comment was to modify the site layout to accommodate, which right. wasn't appropriate. Right. I, I guess working under the assumption that an 18-wheeler would back out on the Arrow Road if that was the case, we could certainly change the curb radiuses. Um, I, I'm, not, I'm not opposed to, to modifying the either entry location for the self-storage facility to, to address that concern in that nature. Uh, again, I, I do stand by the fact that I don't think we're going to ever see a WB-50 on this site. Uh, okay. Um, comment, and then in, in, not to interrupt, but uh, I guess comment two, if we are going through the memo. Might as well, in, in, right? its, in its entirety, um, ties back to the subdivision plans. Uh, he's requesting uh, we graphically show the maintenance, the construction and maintenance easement for the retaining wall. Um, Originally, the wall split both properties. We've moved it in its entirety onto the self-storage facility um, from a construction end that has geo-grid and things of that nature, so it makes sense to put it on the high side of the property. Uh, Mr. Greger's concern is really the maintenance and constructing that if the property is subdivided and when we go to build the storage facility if, the, if it's under separate ownership. So um, consistent with what was a condition of approval on the subdivision plan, we have no objections. We plan to provide those easements. So item two is it really, I, I believe it's a uh, reiteration of what he said as part of the subdivision application, which we agreed to. Okay. Uh, three, as you had indicated, was um, with respect to that distance from the last, from the uh, easternmost bump to the curb line. Um, 
four uh, quite candidly. I mean, that, that's just a it's a coordination yep. piece. There's we have no issues there. The architect just didn't get back from vacation fast enough. Yep. Um, five is that outstanding stormwater comment that I explained is you know I don't want to say minor in nature, but it's a it's a yep. technical component that won't impact anything. Um, six would be similar. It would be the same. Seven. Okay. So yep. those yeah, are those all part are all, of the, drainage, the rest of those are yep those are drainage all comps that you'll take care of. Correct. Okay. Uh, and then right. Mr. Gillespie, I know, received everything on the 28th. Uh, I ha I don't know. I know he had to, a lot of his comments were with respect to uh, components of the application. I don't know if it was said this evening, but we are requesting three waivers consistent with the three previously approved waivers. Uh, one for parking spaces within the front yard setback for the fueling facility. Um, another for the minimum landscape island width. Um, and then a third for... Uh, the number of parking spaces related to the self-storage facility where we have two less than required but in, in the opinion of the operator significantly more than what's really necessary for a storage facility uh, and again those are all wa waivers that were previously approved okay questions from the Commission trying to digest it George I'm, I'm sorry I didn't quite catch a lot of that, that, that did he meet the requirements of our town engineer as stated in this last memo? The width out front is so he, acceptable? He intends to be compliant with all of the town en engineer's comments with the exception of two and even even one of those. So let's let's stick one with the two? let's stick one and three actually. One and three. So let's start with three. They would prefer not to Put the extra width around the outside. Yeah, around the outside. Yeah, right. the and that uh, their opinion is the. He isn't, he isn't meeting it. There's no, and Mr. Gillespie can speak to this as well. But to my understanding, of my review of the regulations, it, there's nothing specific to a fueling facility that requires two directional bypass with a parked car at the fuel pump. Uh, that's a pretty specific regulation to have in there, um, consistent with. As I indicated, fueling facilities in town and then fueling facilities that I've observed um, since we received the comment. Also, um, our company used to do a, a great deal of um, stop and shop gas stations. Um, it, it's it's not typically done. Um, if there's a exorbitant amount of land available, then I, I guess the gas companies wouldn't have a problem doing it. Uh, that being said, that from an operator and construction perspective, adding an additional five feet of pavement that no one feels is really warranted or required by code is just just an it's an unnecessary cost it's, it's eliminating green space which most commissions i go in front of are asking us to reduce pavement area not increase pavement areas um that's kind of the well the short we increased the building what 10 percent the building increased 10 percent but it stayed within well, the over the, with, over, the over the the overall impervious area was was similar in size yeah. and that's maybe why you can't meet these things but no, you no we, we can there uh, to, to clarify there's there's no requirement yeah. it's a suggestion from the town engineer we quite respectfully disagree that it's it's not warranted it's not warranted right correct not that he can't do it because he probably could push the curb line next to the pumps right yeah, spe toward. specifically just just for the yeah. visual it's, it's really it's this curve here it's it's simple it's this curve here You'd, look, you'd be reducing the green space along the road turbo, and you'd be adding five feet of space. He's, does he say that it's two-way, supposed to be two-way, and you're saying one-way? I'm saying that it is 24 feet from the curb to curb. The town requires 22 feet for two-directional travel. There's no requirement for two-directional travel when a car is parked there at a gas station. So with all of us driving cars, I, I think we're all cut comfortable with the situation where there's a car parked here and you're trying to get around the outside, you stop and you allow for the other individual to come around. All right. The other issue left outstanding is the WB50, which, you know, we did uh, agree with the applicant that it probably wasn't necessary to get a WB50 in and out of the site, or I should say circulate around the site. Uh, which is where the town engineer started. At this point, the town engineer is just looking for curb returns on the driveways so that if a WB50 does come in, 
they have the ability to get out without driving over curbs. So what I heard from the applicant was, you know, I, I, it's, it's more than he perhaps uh, thinks is necessary, but they could probably accommodate it. Certainly, yeah, it's a belt and suspenders approach. We can certainly do it, but I don't, I don't object to it. All right. And everything else in the town engineer's memo uh, was, was easy enough to comply with. All right. So that's, again, going back to where we were last time. We had heard from the public. We had heard, you know, we'd asked our own questions, and uh, we just weren't comfortable with all the outstanding issues. And at this point, that's what we're down to. So can we kind of stick to those questions? And, and then I'd like to open it up to the public, see if there's any thoughts out there. Everybody okay? Is there anybody from the public who wishes to speak on this application? Okay, thank you. Back to us. Thoughts? Positions, what are your thoughts on the, uh, the, the pavement width in particular? I mean, I is part of that pavement width the way you're laying it now, now? Is that to try to keep the traffic flow the way you it best serves your retail operation also? Or does it start to confuse and get people a little maybe parking where they, even if it's marked not parking, and confuse the traffic flow of the pumps if it, it is wider? It, it certainly is a concern. Uh, you do con consistently see when parking spaces are full, if you do have a, an absorbent amount of pavement here, people do park along that, that, that curb line. Uh, there, there is a science to laying out a gas station. Absolutely. And well, correct. Right. Correct. And one of the reasons the canopies were flipped was, in fact, part of that science was operation. They wanted to be able to come in and out in a more serpentine as opposed to coming into a dead end and out and around. And, and part of that sizing is to, what I was saying, is to deter people from any things, a parking spot, even though Absolutely. it's not. And so then you get the guy we've all experienced going the wrong way with everybody else, and then the whole trying your best, the natural layout. Correct. Got it. <coughs> Other thoughts? I mean, even if you add the extra width, it can still potentially act as a one-way little piece of pavement anyway so people aren't necessarily following a center line stripe uh, uh, agreed so but if you go on the gas station and you've sat there and watched it yeah it's yeah i mean you can't control it but it's it's that power of uh visual suggestion if you will and if, if you do open it up you do you do also uh, and i'm not going to criticize any drivers but you, you do have the opportunity for People that take a little extra few feet, park their car three feet further away from the curb line as opposed to hugging that pump itself. So, uh, as you indicated, there is a science behind it. The operator, uh, again, it's, you know, very candidly, they have um, uh, several hundred facilities in Ireland. They have several, hundred, several you know, facilities throughout New England and the Northeast. Um, if, if they're comfortable with it and there's no requirement to do it, um, I would encourage the board to, to be consistent with, with the gas station circulation patterns that are current throughout town. Okay. So besides that one outstanding issue in the uh, town engineer's memo, as the applicant noted, there are three waivers required. Uh, you'll, you'll find them outlined in the December 28th memo. I'm sure you'll find them in Peter's as well. Do, 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 do. <clears throat> Suffice to say, he listed them. You need the, they are parking, parking stalls. Two of them are in the front yard setback. Uh, additionally, there are numbers-wise, there are five short. Am I correct when I say that? 32 instead of 37. And then the third one is, le is landscaping. For, the, I, <coughs> for island width. Thank you, Peter. All right. All right. So nobody, are you are you all comfortable with the information from the applicant? And should we just close the hearing? Would somebody like to make a motion on that? Make a motion. We close the hearing. I'll second. Thank you. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Very good. Uh, I did notice that, uh, Jim, you weren't here last time. Are you up to speed on the situation enough to vote? Yes, I'm comfortable. Okay. So there would be nine people voting. Uh, 
Would anybody like to make a motion? Richard? Well, I'll make a motion. We approve application 1967-17-Z, uh, including the waiver of section 7.4 regarding portion of the two parking spaces to be in the front yard, waiver of section 6.2-D regarding the reduction in the amount of parking spaces for the storage facility from 37 to 32 and a waiver of 61L regarding the required width of parking area landscaped islands. Um, and satisfaction of conditions 1, 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8 in Derek Greger's memo dated today. Um, generally speaking, these are these are the major issues. Were there other outstanding issues, um, small ones, you know, that should be, you know, a caveat on this condition, like completion of all the other ones discussed, anything like that? I, I think they're all. It was there was there were written responses in the file um, to our all of our previous comments, which, you know, in in most instances, um, the response was that they had revised. Uh, the plans accordingly so if you wanted to add you know just a, a final condition that uh, um, you know adequate uh, completion of revised site plans uh, in response to the uh, applicants technical memorandum um, as I said most of them are in the record and say completed and others have explanations but if you wanted to sort of blanket cover it that way I think um, that would make sure that we go back and uh, check every one of those again. You know, there were there, yeah. were there were comments like you know the under canopy lighting had to be flush, and they said yes, they'll do that. So, um, you know, that would give them the opportunity to clean up things before they file the final mylars. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And we'll add that as another condition. All right. Would that give reference to the two memos of December twenty eighth and December eighth? Yes. Should, should that be part of the? I, I think that would help. Yes. Well, I think it includes. December 28th specifically, which largely supersedes the 8th, because the 28th came with a revised set of plans. I'll second the motion if that's included, sure. All right. And I guess I would just say that I, I left off number three, not because I'm opposed to it, but because I wasn't feeling strongly enough about requiring it to. And just to, in response to that, the, really the only reason the staff mentioned it is the original proposal uh, had the 24 foot width uh, and it was reduced down and uh, obviously the plans changed there were pump pumps added we do not have a specific requirement for that and obviously if you frequent gas stations which I'm sure all of you do um, people make their way regardless and there's plenty of other pavement throughout the rest of the site I think to adequately handle the circulation and lastly it's the last pump island on the outside so you know, for all of those reasons, I think that's uh, st staff is fine with that. The only reason we mentioned it is it changed from the original plan. Yeah, I mean, and, and you know, truth be told, I've been to enough of the gas stations in town to know that most of the layouts are far from optimal, and I wouldn't use them as a reason no. not to do it right. No. When you have the opportunity to, but um, you know, preserving a few square feet of green space and you know, frankly, I think in, in this particular location, there are going to be enough people struggling to find their way in and out that it might actually slow people down, you know, from using it as, you know, a way to cut through and around intersections and so forth, uh, and sort of calm things down rather than make it, make it worse. All right, we have a motion and a second. Yep, George. Yeah, kind of, kind of following up on that. Um, does this, uh, this is more modern and meets more standards than other gas stations, right? From the conversation I got here. Uh, some of the gas stations in proximity to this are extremely tight 
small and they're old and limited you know cumberland farms obviously if you look at the yeah. size of that and some of the yeah, others that one. yeah they're tiny tiny lots i think they might have originally been carved out for residential purposes rather than for commercial purposes but nevertheless um you know as rich mentioned there's probably not any good shiny examples up there and this one is uh either either much there better. or the you know cyrus dean uh, you know this is a modern station yes so it is. It probably it's, needs things better. It's, it's, it's designed, obviously, yeah. new to accommodate. As you, as you said, the old ones, you know, are, were there on, with other things they were, in the past. Yeah, they were all retrofits, basically, yeah. so. Okay. Any, any additional comments? Motion and a second? Everybody comfortable? All those in favor say aye. 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 Is there anyone opposed? Okay. And... For the recorder, it's uh, it's Joe Hammer who didn't vote. Okay. <coughs> all righty. Good luck. Thank you all for your time. Yeah. <coughs> all right. The uh, the next item on the agenda. Item 3.2, a public hearing for application 1965-17-Z for 170 Ridge Road, LLC, seeking a change of zone from A1 to Special Residential Development, SRD, and site plan and design review for the redevelopment of the former school into 32 dwelling units, once again, at 170 Ridge Road. Good evening. Good evening. All right. So this is a brand, brand new public hearing. Just I, I think there's members of the public here to hear and perhaps speak to this issue. So this is how the public hearing process works while they're setting up. The applicant will uh, make a presentation about the uh, proposal. Uh, the commission will question them, try and get a feel for or, or get an understanding of the whole process of what they're planning. Then we will open it up to the public and get public comment. Uh, and get some questions answered if you have them and then the Commission will take it back again and, and follow up with the uh, With the applicant and if we're comfortable we could close the hearing tonight and if not we could always uh, keep it open and uh, Continue the, the whole process to another meeting and, and and allow the applicant to bring more information to the table So that's how the process works with that. Would you introduce yourselves sure. and then uh, tell us about the project? Okay, um, my, my name is Matt Kuliwa. I'm the attorney for the applicant 170 Ridge Road LLC. I'm also here tonight, uh, Ms. Guy, uh, uh, Ms. Guy Laplante, the principal um, of the applicant, uh, Biff Scheckinger, the applicant's landscape architect and the lead professional who will present the bulk of the application, and um, Hans Winkel from um, Hammerberg Architects um, to answer any questions. Uh, first of all, uh, the, the staff had asked for um, some additional information. I've got two things here to pass around. One is additional information on the applicant, and the other one is some um, answers to questions on traffic. So, give me the here. If you have them, if you want to leave them, we can just we'll put them in the file in case somebody else. Thanks. Um, <coughs> anyhow, uh, 170 Ridge Road. I'm sure you guys are familiar with the property. Uh, it's a four-story brick building, uh, previously used by the state of Connecticut. And it's the loan by the state of Connecticut and used by um, Connecticut Children's Medical Center for educational purposes primarily. It has been, been vacant for some time with the building in sight beginning to become an, a bit of an eyesore. Property is currently zoned A1 residential. 
And the applications before the commission tonight are to seek to change the zone from A1 to special residential development, as SRD zone, and to seek site plan and design review appro approval for the redevelopment of the former school to multifamily with 32 dwelling units. Uh, the applicant has gone through a pre-application review with this commission, and we thank you for the time you took and the feedback provided. It was very, the process is very helpful. Um, I believe that you will see that all the requirements for a conversion to the, an SRD zone have been met. Uh, the site is essentially not changing. Um, we're using the existing building and improvements. Rather, the site is going to be cleaned up and beautified. And the fiscal impact to the town will be, frankly, positive. A project like this will likely house younger professionals not yet ready to buy a home and when they eventually are ready to do so may hopefully choose to stay in town. Uh, the estimate of public school children um, is between two and four kids and I've got four high school kids in my own house so <laughs> that's not a lot. <laughs> and this project is going to put the property back in the tax rolls. Um, the conversion of the property into apartment, apartment use makes sense for the property, the neighborhood, and the town. With that, and unless anyone has any upfront <coughs> questions, for me, I'm going to turn things right over to, to Biff. Hi, I'm Biff Scheckinger. I'm a licensed landscape architect, uh, state of Connecticut. Uh, I'm getting over the flu, so I actually will stand still for once instead of pacing in front of you like I did last time. Uh, make this very quick. The existing site uh, plan, if you notice, it looks remarkably like the concept plan that we showed you. Uh, and I think that was the whole intent. It seemed we had favor, we did modify certain things pursuant to some of your comments, but it's the plan. And I, I think what Matt was saying, and Hans will reiterate, it's a lovely building. It's in great shape. We've met with the staff several times on site, even and walked through the building and everything. And it, it's a great resource for town. It'd be a shame to lose it. And this is a proposal on an economic way to reutilize the building. Uh, we did do a demographic study about school children because I know that's a, that's an issue. It the original one didn't have the breakdown, which Hans will go to, which is now we have 27 single uh, single bedroom apartments and five double. But I reworked them versus the 18 and 14 respectively, that they had in the original demographic study for school-aged children. I did the numbers. They actually come exactly back down to between two and four children possibly will be in this at the maximum uh, school population that would be generated given the uh, census information and everything else in that report is correct. So I just thought I'd add that in case somebody's gone, wait a minute, it's 18 there, it's 27. So, But it all works out. And I did the math with a calculator. It wasn't in my head, so I know it's almost right. Uh, basically, I don't want to go through the whole thing. Uh, you, you know, Peter can fill you in on everything. We've had extensive meetings with the staff. We've had extensive comments from the staff. We've, I believe, answered substantively everything. Um, there are one or two items that are still open, and one is a basically the triangle of land, uh, which the engineer mentioned. We certainly wish to give that to t there was I'm sure there was some sort of agreement verbally made, but it was never conveyed to the town, which is right here is a town sidewalk that goes over the property. And we thought, well, we'll clean it up. It'd be very nice. It's six. Uh, we have a new revised survey, by the way, which shows that and references that map. And we will more than gladly give that to the uh, to the town to be part of the uh, right away for Ridge Road. The other cool thing is we actually then, well, wait a minute, did we? There is no nonconformity that will be created by giving away. We have uh, 32 lots, 32 units in there at 15 to an acre, which really comes out to one per 2,904 square feet. So doing that math, we actually, we, we could lose up to 19,000 plus, 19, excuse me, 1,900 square feet so we're only taking 606 out of it, so there won't be a nonconformity created with the gift of the land. So just want to make sure. Otherwise, I'd ask you for a waiver on that. Uh, there are th uh, two waivers. Peter, do you want me to quickly at go through them? OK. The waivers. I lied. I can't stand still. Um, the, the waivers we ask, are, there are three of them. 
and they're all really contingent on the fact that they're existing conditions. Uh, I'll go through bas basically the first one which I, I submitted was for you can't have parking or loading in the front of this, in this zone and because it's a corner lot, this is all the front. So unfortunately we inherited, there is paving and parking there because it's there. So that was the waiver for that. Um, the other waiver is a combination of two, and, and it's for the fifth. Go ahead. But we're exactly so some form of loading dock is required, perhaps. What no, kind there's of, no what lo kind of loading. It, it's the it's the it's the way that the regulation is written that you're not allowed to have. Uh, I didn't that, quote that it specifically, but it's parking, loading areas in the front yard. Okay, so there's no loading. No, you don't have a, a Actually, small you, truck pulling up into a dock. There's no, no, no we have no loading dock for this, and frankly, we didn't ask for, we didn't design one in it. We didn't think it was appropriate for this. And Fair enough, thank you. Okay, so that takes care of the, the front yard waiver that we requested. It was an inherited situation. And then we had the five foot, we need a five foot minimum perimeter side yard landscape strip. And also where it's abutting a property, it has to be 15 feet wide with double row of evergreen trees. Again, we inherited a situation, and let me, I'll, I'll do the specifics. Uh, we're, we're putting in a, about 150 linear feet of an ornamental six foot high wooden fence already. We're actually, the existing parking's 3.7 feet from the property line. We're back to almost five feet from the property line. But there's one little corner that's a little less than five feet, so hence the, the, the waiver for that. And then any place we could go out to 15 feet and double load, you know, the evergreens were doing it. And in this case, we're adding the ornamental fence, which you actually are allowed as part of a consideration for augmenting landscape buffer to a residential use next door. So, so that little expanded green space in the northeast corner mm -hmm. is proposed. Right today, it's, it's blacktop. Is that what you're suggesting? Uh, no, no, it, it's, it's there. There's nothing there, though. It's just lawn that drops down into all right, thank whatever. You. Um, I, the big so what about all of this, though? Uh, and be cool if I had the map to show you, which I do. Oh. So everybody knows we're basically, excuse me on this. Uh, you can't see it. Basically, we're keeping the same amount of parking. We're adding one extra space. That's an extra handicap space. Uh, we've eliminated all the pavement that goes right to the building. We have that nice 15 foot, excuse me, 15 foot buffer around the building for landscaping. And the net, net on this is that we have, even though we've accommodated all this and even an extra handicap space, we got rid of any parking that's over here. This is just now an activity area. Uh, and also get to the dumpster and also provide emergency access for the handicapped units on here. But we have 3,000, over 3,100 uh, square feet of less coverage to do all of this. So we went from, gee, I forget. So we, we've increased landscaping by over, I forget, it's th almost 3.57%, something like that. Uh, but it comes out to 3,100 plus of, of square footage and this, what also this, uh, you know, we were able to get, even though we disturbed over half acre of land, we did get our approval, a unanimous approval for the certificate for sedimentation erosion control plan because we were disturbing over a half acre. Uh, the great thing, though, is you notice where the, it's almost a wash of what we're taking away and what we're giving on this side, and this is all sheet flow and ground recharge. Almost all of the 3,000 difference, meaning eliminating extra impervious area, goes to the storm drainage system that is picked up and goes to Jordan Lake. Plus we have the vortex now, uh, a vortex chamber that was put into the area here just before discharge per, you know, Derek's requirements. So and the building. An interesting map. For those of you who can't see it, suffice to say it looks like the primary difference is that you pull the blacktop away from the building. For the, for the plantings around the building, per yeah, se. And, and everything stuff. else is plus or minus. Yeah, a few the orange feet. is everything we took out. The purple's what we added back in. Yeah. yeah. Thank Until you. I love markers. Got plenty of them. Uh, I think that's a great overview. Uh, I'd like to let Hans now briefly go over the architecture refinements and 
and we'll open up to questions unless somebody has anything specific. So you touched on the right of way. Are you the one to talk to about the right of way, <coughs> the triangle piece? Sure. Um, so the, the acquisition that the state of Connecticut intended to take never took place. Is that a reminder of what happened? Yeah, our, 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 our um, title search and everything has, has shown that I, I think there was probably a verbal agreement in 2015, they even drew up plans, but it was never legally transferred onto the land record. We're more than, we've actually revised our, our uh, final survey to show that, highlight that 6, 000, uh, 606 square feet here, and we're more than happy to. That clown. Hmm? You know that's my name oh, down that here? Guy. That clown. Nobody likes that guy. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. I was just about to say that clown too. <laughs> <laughs> um, Oh. Timing's everything. The, uh, and the uh, facilities that would have been put in easement areas, because there were some places they planned on putting uh, signal boxes and such on the corner there. They're so all installed. Easements. There are easements already legally described. They're all now part of our final existing condition survey. Okay. All right. And Thank we you. could actually, I don't know if you want it as fee simple, because that's only, uh, I think it's 186 square feet. So that'd still only bring us up to seven... Yeah, it's, it's, a little under 800 square feet, and I told you we have uh, 1,900 square feet to burn, so. Okay. That's a decision you all can make if you wish. Right. But the client is certainly more than happy to do it. So we'll quickly go in the architecture and then. Thank you. Good evening, uh, my name is Hans Winkle. I'm from Don Hammerberg Architects. Um, I don't know if Fifth mentioned, but we've already been approved by design review, uh, but I'll give you a brief overview of our uh, plans for the building. Um, uh, architecturally, the building exterior will remain uh, largely unchanged. Um, it's a great old building we'd like to preserve, so we're gonna give it a thorough cleaning and repair any uh, damaged masonry and whatnot. Uh, the only major uh, changes we plan on for the exterior are the three front entrances. Um, we're gonna have new code compliant ramps and stairs, uh, some steel cable railing systems. Uh, okay. uh, new new gla glass entry doors and uh, some uh, horizontal flat canopies over the uh, doors themselves. Uh, the two rear entrance doors will also have matching flat canopies, and the side uh, porches on each side will all have matching uh, railing systems as the front. Um, for the interior, we have a mix of one and two bedroom units on all four floors. Um, we have 27 one bedroom, five two bedroom units. Um, let's see. The, uh, the magenta units here on the basement and first floor plans are are the uh, two bedroom units and the green highlighted ones are the one bedroom units. So. Uh, zoning regulations require um, a minimum size of one bedroom units to be 600 square feet and 800 square feet for the two bedroom units for which all the units comply with. Um, the building has an elevator so all floors are accessible. Uh, there is outside access to the elevator from the rear entrance on the basement level uh, back here and on the first floor from uh, via the ramp to the first floor entrance uh, so uh, minimally minimally per code uh, four units will be required to be ADA compliant for handicap <coughs> accessibility so we haven't really designated which units will be uh, those units yet but so we'll have at least four of those um, Building amenities would include laundry facilities and a recre recreation area in the basement. Um, that's about it. Do you have any more questions? Anything I didn't cover? So just to the commission, um, you'll notice it in Peter's memo. He said it, these guys have to go back before um, Architectural Design Review Committee. Design Review wanted some more specificity on the methods of cleaning the exterior of the building, some more details on uh, various odds and ends. So, uh, however, they did um, 
endorsed the project and, and uh, gave it an advisory approval. Uh, so they just now, before the building permits issued, you'd have to circle back with them and make sure some of the specifics are actually what they uh, intended to see happen with the project. So, but they did, they did give it their blessing. Thank you. So there's no, no additions. Generally speaking, the person on the street's going to see effectively the same building, but cleaned up and. Correct. Yes. Sir. I mean, we're, we're, you know, on the entrances, we're removing some of the, um, there's some dilapidated columns in the front, which we're removing to also accommodate the new entrance. But other than that, some new trim work around the doors, but yeah, generally good cleaning repair work. So they, your architects on the um, design review didn't have of any uh, recommendation? No. no. Really? Okay. About, um, about new windows or did that look, the, your windows look different from right. the future? <laughs> um, you know, I, I don't know. Depending on the condition of the windows now, I think the ones that are there are new-ish. If, um, if they're in good shape, I think we will keep them. Um, Okay. You know, if a couple need to replace, we'll replace them with like windows. But if a majority of them need replacing, we will uh, go with something like I've shown in the rendering there. Yeah, so your more. rendering shows that it's almost like brand new windows, right. you know, dark windows, <laughs> darker finish, which seems to be the new, new, the, in new thing. thing. Right, yeah, right. Yeah. But you were actually thinking of leaving the windows the way they are with the white trim and. Yeah, depending depending on what shape they're in. You know, we haven't Just thoroughly examined. Aesthetically, aesthetically. Oh, correct. Yes. Yes. Okay. Are those those porches? Are those just public areas for the floors to go hang out on? Oh, the end units. Yeah, those are common areas for the whole floor to use. They actually are on the. Uh, See the plan? Yeah. Because they're not. They're not connected, right? Right. They are not actually public porches. They they're because they are end units on the. Uh, all, all the floors. So. Oh, so those are specific to the end unit. To each end unit, yes. They're, they're like porches then. Correct. The so that'd be the unit you want to get. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Other questions? Tony? Are the handicapped spaces in the back by the elevator, the handicapped locations for the parking? Yes. If there are, correct? Yeah. Are there handicapped spaces by the rear oh, elevator? Absolutely. That's yeah, where so. we clustered the ones up. Uh, we put, uh, as I said, we, we meet the requirements up here for you know, the van as well as the standard here, but we put one also here in the way because we're thinking this building will be utilized as an annex for the use of, uh, you know, for, right now it's kind of an open, uh, flexible space for them to use, you know, if they want meetings or social gatherings or something, it's part of our social you know, activity in lawn area over here. So we have one here, we have two here, one here. And how about the heating and ventilation units? Are they going to be on the rooftop or are they? Uh, they currently, uh, right now, I think you probably see in the existing, there are a lot of uh, window unit, AC units, but we'll be putting all new uh, central air in and uh, all the heating system. And that is. Where will that be located? Or do you have it? Well, we're going to put that, we put it some, we put some in as many as we can do discreetly, the small units in back. Right now they're in the front here. It looks like somebody just dropped one off from a delivery truck and ran. The one's in over here. So we're to, our first thing was let's clean up the front and we'll move them back from the same place. And we put them in a rhythm so they were between the windows. We can landscape them and not block the view from the windows out on the first floor. <coughs> on the base one and the same here. So, and also the technology of the units has gotten such that they're really not big, they're not the monstrous, the few we have back here, the Smithsonian call for it is a couple with like old catalogs back here. Mm -hmm. But then there's nice, you know, the smaller units, and I believe, where we went to any other? There should be a few on the roof. There'll be some, but we have a pair of so they won't be visible from the, from the North Ridge Road. You won't see them. Right? Correct. Yeah. Um, I want to just keep going, I guess. Oh, uh, you're done. I'm yes. Is there somebody after you, like traffic or something? Um, Anybody? 
Was was the traffic going to be a part of the proposal? I don't want to I don't want to make you give us a presentation. I'll just uh, let the questions go. I will will point out to the uh, to the commission, and maybe I can answer this question. So so Peter and the rest of the staff in the town put together a list of. Uh, uh, put together a memo for us and also had some comments on this on the site plan and I do notice that You provided responses to to those I assume that's what the January 2nd memo is that you were responding to Peters and other staff <clears throat> and I assume Peters looked over your response and is there anything that concerns you Peter? Well, we've been getting um Responses over the last couple days. Uh, I was just handed a revised set of plans before the meeting, so I have not. Uh, I cannot say that um, I've had a chance uh, or the information necessary to complete my review. Uh, however, there is an email dated January second uh, from Mr. Scheckinger, uh, which I gave a copy to each of you, uh, which attempts to address uh, my comments. Uh, however, I can't say that I've confirmed. Um, all of those uh, at this point in time. So um, I don't know if you responded to the town engineer's comments in uh, the same uh, manner. Um, I thought I emailed you with that as well. I, I didn't mm -hmm. see that, so I can't speak. Yeah, we had an apps, we had a complete, um, I might even have a copy of my file. You okay, I, that, would, that would be helpful. Um, okay. So I can't speak uh, at the same time for the town engineer as well, so... Um, and I'm sure he would want the opportunity uh, to um, to respond uh, to you in writing as well. So, so Derek <coughs> provided comments December 15th. That's yep. the one that you're referring to where there were nine of them? I believe so. So my comments were December 28th, and his were um, 18th. December 18th, which was his more substantial set of comments. And then he had a December 15th, which was... Uh, comments specifically to uh, the Wetlands Commission as they were performing their erosion and sediment control review. So he has he had two separate memos. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. All right. And I think you have the traffic report. I mean, basically, bottom line is uh, not much not much traffic impact. 30, 32 units will generate a total of 12 vehicle trips. Morning peak hour, 15 vehicle trips. Afternoon peak hour, and the um, basically the proposed use will be generate significant significantly fewer trips than the previous years. Rich, I guess, I guess my question on that was whether this report is based on actual previous use or the assumption that it's like every other elementary school in town because I didn't think it operated in the same way as an ordinary elementary school in terms of, you know, if it's cloudy out, 400 parents line up to drop off their kids. And if it's still cloudy in the afternoon, 400 parents line up to pick up their kids. Um, I thought it was, you know, people generally being bussed in with very limited amount of um, non-staff drop off. So, you know, while I, I understand the traffic generation from the proposed use I just asking for confirmation that the former use trip counts are accurate <clears throat> and also I believe I was trying to remember back if they could provide us information I think the bus well. actually used to stack at Ridge Road because they go down that ramp in the front so they actually stack <clears throat> idle in front of those houses I mean, our traffic engineer is not here to answer that, but um, be, seeing that he couldn't go back in time and actually measure the traffic that happened when that use was there, I don't imagine that he was able to measure what it was. No, but I didn't. So I don't. No, I, I, I think it's based on I'll, typical I'll grant school. I'll you that, but I mean, I, <clears throat> I, I mean, I didn't mean that facetiously. I just mean, I, <coughs> I, 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 I doubt it's based on the actual, you know, measured use of the, of the previous use. Okay. They yeah, actually, I didn't think it was, but I didn't yeah. think it was accurately reflective of the previous use either. I'm sure it's working. That's crash cool. analysis. Yeah, but still, they, if you, if you, though, look. For the crash analysis, they did use the actual numbers. And they right. used, yeah, they had a, a 
from 2012 and 2014 while it was still an operating school. So before I uh, open up to the public comment, uh, we just remind everybody that basically this is a zone change request and specific in our guidelines, as Peter pointed out on his page too, that uh, we are uh, directed to consider provisions under 3.4 and 10.1 uh, of the regs. So I asked Peter to go back and read them to us, remind us what they are. If you read Peter's memo, you know one of them obviously is that uh, it needs to be consistent with planet conservation and development, and he, he helped us out and said that it is. But what are the other topics, please, Peter? So in terms of uh, Section 3.4, Section 3.4 are your special residential development district uh, requirements, uh, basically um, establishing the purpose. The purpose of this regulation is intended to provide for a residential zoning district which permits a variety of housing diversity and housing opportunities, including single-family and multifamily residential units appropriate to the environmental characteristics of the land and the character of the neighborhood. Um, so it is intended that any special residential district shall be established by the commission only after taking into consideration the following. The community need as determined by the commission, the supply of land available in the present and proposed zone, and then lastly, whether the site is capable of accommodating the increased building density without detrimental impact. Uh, the rest of those regulations really talk about the procedures and the specific requirements, um, site development requirements, uh, density requirements, uh, et cetera. So uh, I think most of the staff memos that, that uh, have addressed that and the applicant has addressed that. And then uh, there was reference to section 10.1, which is the administrative section of your regulations, which establishes the criteria <coughs> for a number of different types of applications, one of those being zone change uh, applications. So section 10.1, subsection G, which talks about zone change applications. Uh, obviously, once again, talk about procedures, talk about notice requirements and such. Uh, and then subsection eight uh, says the following. Before the zoning, before the commission approves a zone change, it shall determine that uh, subsection A, the proposed change is in accordance with the plan of Con conservation and development, and I did provide you in my memo uh, references to the sections uh, of the conservation and development plan that apply. Uh, subsection B, the proposed change is in conformance with the purpose of the regulations, which I just uh, kind of explained. And then uh, subsection C, the location of and activities permitted within the new zone will not adversely affect the public health, safety, welfare, or property values and then lastly the pr property is suitable for the intended use so those are the primary criteria uh, for a zone change application um, so thank you all right last question before I ask the public to join us <clears throat> all right. is there anybody from the public who would like to uh, comment or ask a question that we can get answered if you if there is raise your hand Come around to the microphone. You'll have to come up to the microphone because we are taping it and one at a time. <coughs> I'm Phil Kennedy. I live at 181 Ridge Road, which is right across the street from the building. Uh, I have to admit that my first gut reaction when I heard that another apartment building was going to be on Ridge Road keeping in mind that there's another one down by the bridge there, which is a much larger impact, which we feel probably is gonna increase the traffic considerably more than this one will. But my first gut reaction was, oh no, not another apartment house right across the street. Once I got past my gut reaction, I had to say, what are the alternatives? Right now, the building is empty and has been for quite a while, and it's been starting to deteriorate, and we've been concerned with that. Uh, with nobody in the building, the fire alarms often go off at 2 o'clock in the morning and the police and fire trucks come there and keep us up at, at night. The, probably the best alternative I could think of was that the town would buy the property, 
knock the building down and extend the park, which is on the eastern side of this property. I said, what's the chance of that happening? I thought so. Probably the next best thing that could happen would be to have somebody demolish the building and put up five or six houses there, single family homes that are similar to what's already on the street. Well, that would be very nice, but I thought about what's the, imp the financial impact of that? Who's gonna pay for the demolition versus what they would be able to recoup from selling the houses? And I figured that's not gonna happen either. I started thinking about what's the worst situation and probably the worst I could think of was to bring the school back again. Because we lived for probably eight or nine years in quite a hellish situation. You asked about traffic there. The school buses would often back up all the way to the Tollgate Road. In the wintertime, they'd leave the engines running. In the summertime, they'd leave their air conditionings running. Many of them would get out of their hot vehicles and come sit in my front yard under the tree to cool off without asking permission. Uh, the other bad thing I could think of was if somebody demolished the building and put up a six or seven story apartment building that filled up the whole space. And I figured probably you wouldn't let that happen. So the bottom line is I think that this is probably the best that we can hope for. We've pretty much gotten used to having that building there. It actually predates most of the houses on Ridge Road. And it's kind of a cozy old building, so we like the looks of it. And when I heard that they were gonna keep the appearance of it and clean it up, that was a good sight. The fact that they're having mostly one bedroom apartments probably means that there won't be a lot of kids running around. So that was a good sign too. Uh, the fact that they're keeping the traffic pattern um, was a good sign too, having the one-way entrance there and one-way exit. Um, so bottom line, I have to feel that it's probably the best that we can hope for and it'll be good to have somebody in the building rather than having it vacant. My last concern is since it's now an A1 zone and they're asking for a variance on that, I'm not up on the ins and outs of the special usage um, requirements, but my, one of my concerns is what happens in 10 years if they decide to knock the building down, would they be permitted to then build a new building there that might exceed the <coughs> visual impact of what we have now? Or would they have to go through some procedure like what you're doing right now? In other words, it, in other words we're not giving away a permanent uh, situation where the zone changes and they could just do whatever they wanted to in the future. So under, no, they would have to come back to us. Okay. The, the zone change is for the whole property and it is permanent. And does that open up opportunities for someday somebody coming through and saying, hey, I want to, I can financially do so. It makes sense to knock the whole thing yeah. down and do something else. Yes, I can't say that that wouldn't happen, but they would absolutely have to come through another process. Okay. Right. Even even to change its use from, from the, um, the apartments into something else, they would end up coming back too. So the they would there's a site plan review process required in addition to the zone change, which mm -hmm. they're asking for. Um, they are presently maxed out at the density for the type of development they're proposing, so they couldn't add units if they kept this style of development. Um, if they change the style of development, there's different densities in the regulations, but anything that changed the site would require them to come back to the commission for approval. Okay. okay. I guess that answers my concerns. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. <coughs> I believe there's a hand up in the back. Join us. Um, good evening, and thank you for allowing me the opportunity to comment on the rezoning application for 170 Ridge Road. My name is Kristen Soto, and I'm a resident of 557 Jordan Lane. I'm here tonight on behalf of my husband Moises and our one-year-old daughter. We have significant interest in the outcome of this decision as we live three hours down from the property on Jordan Lane and will be directly impacted by this decision. 
As millennials ourselves, my husband and I can appreciate the need for convenient and affordable housing. In fact, we were first time home buyers when we purchased our home on Jordan Lane. One of the reasons that we chose this home was due to the neighborhood. Although Jordan Lane is a busy road, its access to public parks, dedicated green space, and the tightened La Cava neighborhood make it a desirable place to live. Several of our neighbors that we've come to know over the years are the original owners of their homes. Other young families that are looking to start families of their own or move to safer neighborhoods have settled in the area and put significant money and effort into updating and renovating their homes. Um, with that being said, under Article 3.4.A.2.C, one of the key considerations is whether the site is capable of accommodating the increased building density without detrimental impact. Studies have consistently shown that rezoning does not always equal negative consequences in terms of home values or crime rates. As a former renter myself, I'm not here to make an argument about us versus them and why we don't want apartment dwellers in our neighborhood. In fact, I strongly believe that a well-maintained apartment complex would be more of an asset to the neighborhood and community than a vacant, poorly maintained building. However, there are several factors related to the current proposal that concern me and do not uphold this requirement, um, specifically related to traffic, buffering, and parking. There were several mentions tonight of inheriting some problems that don't comply with regulations, but there's a big difference between a school that operates five days a week from nine to three and a 24 seven residential property. In an October 23rd memo from Charles Harlow, the chief traffic engineer, significant safety concerns were raised about egress from the property via the Jordan Lane driveway. The memo states that there is safe egress because there haven't been any recent crashes at the location. However, the driveway does not meet minimum CT Department of Transportation distance site requirements. Additional handwritten notes talk about the need to change road markings from a double yellow line to permit legal left turns. From a purely theoretical standpoint, these sound like reasonable accommodations. However, as someone who lives on this road and understands how people actually drive down this hill, as opposed to posted speed limits, this is dangerous both to future residents at this property and other motor vehicles on the road. Um, additionally, traffic studies um, for the crash analysis for school versus resident um, don't take into account that in a residential property, cars would be exiting this property at all times of day and not just at two distinct periods. Another concern about this property is that it does not meet the minimum buffering requirement for the neighboring residents. As opposed to the 15 linear feet required, this property will only have a buffer of 4.75 feet. This could detrimentally impact the value of that specific property and thus the value of other properties in the neighborhood. This property also barely meets the minimum requirements of one and a half parking spaces per unit. Based on this restricted parking and targeting social millennials, how will visitor parking be accommodated? My concern is that unsafe road conditions will be caused by parking in high traffic areas on Ridge Road or Jordan Lane. Although parking is legally permitted in these locations, due to the absence of designated parking lanes in this area, it could lead to potential hazardous conditions. Um, an additional concern is the use of porches on the end of the building. Um, unfortunately, I couldn't see the visualization very well during the presentation, but having porches four stories high um, would exceed the height of any privacy um, fences that are posted, um, reducing privacy in adjacent yards. I urge the Zoning Commission to take these considerations into account when reviewing this application for the rezoning of 170 Ridge Road as a special residential development to ensure the continued safety and character of our neighborhood while planning for Weathersfield's continued growth and development. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Sometimes, I, I just want to make sure anybody has any questions of you. Um, not seeing any hands raised, so thank you thank very you. much. Uh, you did raise some concerns. We'll get back to the applicant on those topics in a few minutes. Yes. Like to join us? Right. Good evening, Tom Mazzarella, 600 Walcott Hill Road. I'm not as well prepared as the previous speaker. Seems like she had her facts uh, all in a row. Um, I'm going to keep it kind of basic. I'm questioning the need for additional apartment units in the town of Weathersfield. Uh, this will be the third project in about a year. Um, 
<clears throat> the other two are not completed. We don't really know what the outcome is going to be. We're told that millennials don't have many children and there won't be any impact on the town of Wethersfield school system. We're told that these apartments don't create traffic. I can't understand how we can keep adding units and not believe that there is going to be some increase in road traffic. I took the opportunity to drive into the parking, the lower parking lot, which I believe is going to be the primary parking lot, and attempted to exit on a left. I believe it was on a weekend. Uh, you're not going to make it up the hill. It, there's cars flying down at you. You can't see what's going on. It's, you're going to have an accident. It was hard enough taking a right-hand turn. Um, so I'm very concerned about that. The other part of the project that I'm concerned about is zoning change. If you people will remember the project on further down on Ridge Road, um, which you in initially voted against, the applicant came back with a lawsuit and I sat here for that presentation and the attorney representing that client must have said 50 times that it was a previously approved zone change. Different use, but the zone had changed. I believe it was uh, elderly housing or some kind of uh, care facility. The point I'm getting at is if this a zone change is approved tonight or in the near future and the project doesn't go forward there's a strong likelihood that another applicant is going to come in here with a completely different design that does meet the town uh, requirements for uh, special residential development and that's going to get approved uh, I'm not clear tonight whether you're just approving the zone change or are you proving the application because that rendering there is, does not look like what we have now uh, one of the commissioners pointed out the windows that, that looks beautiful yet the architect proposed that if the windows were okay the way they were they would remain I think the uh, window-mounted HVAC units looks horrible currently and if they're going to be replaced with some units I don't think it's a very attractive building if you put the units up on the roof we all know what that creates we'll have another Walcott Hill Road problem where we need a 30 foot $300,000 screening the fire escapes on each end I think they're awful and I'm not sure if we're talking about uh, cleaning them up and reusing them as porches or what what they're going to look like when they're done so just some items to consider uh, I hope you'll give it some very serious thought about whether Weathersfield needs more apartments for millennials we have not yet filled the other two projects we don't know what the outcome is going to be uh, if you read the papers and you see what's going on in Rocky Hill they have a, a severe problem with uh, apartments uh, they've actually uh, put a zoning enforcement policy in place where you can only have so many people per unit because the situation is such that they have market rate apartments in Rocky Hill that are being filled with multiple families. They're taxing the school systems. They've had to put another, uh, approve another elementary school. They have uh, West Hill Elementary School. They have eight portable units there housing this huge influx 
of young families, uh, hardworking young families, but when you have two or three workers living in one apartment uh, with multiple children, uh, and they all have uh, well-paying jobs, they don't have a problem meeting market rate uh, apartments. So there's no assurance that the same situation couldn't happen in Wethersfield. Thank you for your time. Tommy, quick question for you. When, when you're talking about Rocky Hill, isn't it contrary where these are one bedroom units? I, I can't imagine three, one and to four, two. three to four people being in these mostly one bedroom. One are and you, two. Are you, you think that's a good thing to have a one bedroom units proposed and millennials coming into the town? I'm sorry, Tony. You think it's, it's a good thing for Wethersfield to have these one bedroom proposals versus 20 or 15 three bedroom units in this building? I don't know. I, I know if you put uh, six adults in a, in a three bedroom unit with ch children, I think you're overtaxing the unit. I think we all agree. <laughs> I don't know anybody that would agree to that. We'll all agree. And, and this, this is existing. And I'm not trying to attack any particular group of people. Uh, it's just reality. Uh, the people are coming in. They need semi-temporary housing. Uh, they, are well, they have well-paying jobs. They don't have any problem paying $2,000 a month for a two-bedroom unit and then overtaxing that unit. You have more cars. You have more children. It goes on and on. And, and well, I'm, I'm going to say it again. We don't know what's going to happen further down on Ridge Road. We don't know what's going to happen uh, on the Silestine Highway. Uh, you know, it may turn out great. Maybe there's only going to be four children living exactly. further down Ridge Road. But we're basing everything on so-called expert demographics and traffic studies and so forth. I assume the applicant will answer those questions when you're done. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. What, what, uh, do you, you never mention um, that whether they were Section 8 or, or other No, no it's not Section 8. They're not. That's the implication you no. gave. No. So. No, these. Because I intend to ask. I haven't done that yet. But. No, I'm talking about uh, families that have no problem paying the market rate, rate. $1,750, I think they called out, or thereabouts. The, the money's not an issue, but if you put three working families right. in one unit, oh, yeah. you know. Okay, okay. Thanks. thanks. Yes, sir, come on up. Hi, I'm uh, Christopher Schaus, uh, 573 Jordan Lane. Um, I'm directly impacted um, by the lower parking uh, parking lot on this property abuts my property. In fact, the entire my entire property abuts one side of this this property. Um, <clears throat> my my concern is a couple of things. I, I they had mentioned, uh, and I haven't seen everything, um, but they had mentioned. Changing the traffic flow and being in one entrance and one exit is, um, and as someone brought up earlier, one exit out onto uh, Jordan Lane. Um, I'm not sure how they're going to reroute that because the two parking lots don't. Uh, so, aren't together. So I, I don't think they're changing the the uh, parking lot. Okay. And the other thing is, uh, I just the main thing there is I just want to know how that's going to affect uh, myself and there's another. Uh, some, someone else there that are the two properties that uh, uh, directly abut the property. Um, and they mentioned uh, putting up a buffer and a fence, but uh, there's really, between my property and that um, parking lot is a guardrail. You know, there's only a couple of feet really between those, and I don't know where they're gonna pull off of that parking space 
that lower parking space now is about 20, 20 something spaces. Um, if he had mentioned they're going to add add some extra space, some green space there, or some extra so uh, landscaping and some buffer. So that's going to actually reduce some of the parking spaces. So so let me let me <coughs> let me describe. Allow me to describe what I heard, sir. <coughs> sir, yes. let me let me uh, attempt to describe what I think um, is going to happen along your property line, so that you can react to it, and then you know we'll verify it with them when we get them back up here. Okay, there's a there's a fence going down the side property. They're going to propose a fence. Mm. Uh, we will ask him how tall, because I don't remember him mentioning how tall, but I imagine it's six or eight feet of a of a, a fence of some sort, and we'll get to the point uh, get to what it is, and then you'll notice toward uh, the toward the Jordan Lane entrance, they're proposing a stand of arb uh, probably arborvitaes of some sort, okay, uh, where none exist today. The pavement line, where the pavement is today, is probably not gonna change at all. There is guide rail along there that the uh, town staff has asked them to consider upgrading it, but then of course if it's behind this new fence anyways, you won't see it, right? But um, that's in summary what's going on already. It's not going any closer to you, the pavement. And I, and I don't think we'll get their confirmation, but as you can see from the gray that's on that map, that's all existing blacktop. They're not changing how people circulate already. So right, okay. There's, um, there's still an access to and from Jordan Lane, and there okay. are two entry points up on Ridge Road. Ridge Road. All right, and again, the, the parking, as was brought up before, you know, with the, there's a, a 27 single bedroom units and, and five two bedroom units. So, I mean, even judging a car per bedroom, you know, it's most people today are not all relying on public transportation if they're you know, going. That's, you know, you're looking at 37, uh, 37 parking spaces plus needed access for emergency vehicles and, and whatnot. And that's Correct. really pushing what they have there at the moment. Uh, the other thing that no one's mentioned, or I'm not sure what's going to happen, there's another existing building on there, uh, which used to house the Chris radio station. Um, and judging from this thing, if that's the building there, there's an awful lot of extra space they're showing behind there that I don't believe is part of that property, but it could be. I, I, I could be wrong. Because um, there's that abuts up to the green spaces, almost just a little bit behind that. So. Fair, fair enough. I, you're right. I remember that there's a there's a discussion. I don't think we had it tonight about that other building. So we'll clarify that with them. You, you'll actually notice they offered a pictorial. Um, they showed it to us, and you probably didn't see it. But that's the change. That's a representation of the change in the blacktop. Taking the pavement, the orange is taking the pavement out. Move back a little. <coughs> the fence will be along here, and then because we pulled this out, this since we could, we double planted it. Here. The only real change besides taking that is now there's a substandard entry that goes in. It's only 19 a change in width. We're, we have to by, by requirement have a 24 foot two way road. Right now it's dangerous because it's so narrow. Mm. Uh, we've sent it to the state. Uh, we had a, um, feedback from the traffic engineer about the state. The state traffic engineer has reviewed it. They have no comments or concerns with it, and they're going to grant the widening at the, that part to be in compliance with the zoning regulations. So you're, 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 you. you will fence in the perimeter of the of the properties? I'm going to fence yeah. everything I can to yeah. block we, we Then we're going to access, but you can, you can determine if you want more fence, and we'll be glad to put it in. Right now the fence goes from here to here, and then when, as soon as we can, and I pulled the pavement out here, as soon as we can open this up, we double load it, proposed uh, spruce trees, just like there is, uh, you know, the nice ones over here. We're going to hmm. do that. If you want the fence to be continued along, I'm sure we'd be glad to do that yeah. as well. Okay. Right. Can, you, can you describe your experience? Because you're the closest um, example of somebody who pulls in and out of that area fairly regularly. Can you describe your experience pulling in and out of your driveway? It doesn't look like you have a turnaround, but no, I don't. Um, I well, I 
it's a double driveway, so I can you turn can around. Sort of Kate turn your way around. But. My wife turns around. I, <laughs> I, I will, you know, occasionally back out, but you have to play the light, and so you have to uh, you're really. At that end of your driveway waiting for a light before you can turn yes I, I won't pull out unless the lights red <coughs> and I got and I have to wait because okay. never fails somebody Someone comes flying over that over red and over. they've almost gotten hit a, a, on numerous occasions yeah. um, so you really have to play that light and get used to how that traffic flows never any issues with Q people backing up from Ridge down Jordan just so <coughs> if, if there's like cars lined up behind each other waiting for the light and right. you have to wait for that to clear before you can pull yeah out. i mean it, I sometimes there's there's a there's a lot a lot of waiting you know Here but there, it's yeah regular you know but uh, other than that it's 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 not that bad i i misunderstood thinking that all the all the exits would be out there but i guess just for that that lower parking lot it would be a, as it is now um and as what was brought up earlier is when it was a school, it was Monday through Friday. No one there on the weekends, no one there at night. This is coming and going, you know, all day, every day. So. Thank, Thank you. you. Somebody else who'd like to uh, speak? Mike's right here. You can't see. <laughs> okay, my name is Joel Ursel, and I live at 565 Jordan Lane. My boat, my neighbor just spoke, and he did a very good job. I've been there 47 years. That's a long time. And I've seen many changes on Jordan Lane and Ridge Road, and many of them have been lousy. And I'll now, the traffic on Jordan Lane since I've been there 47 years has increased more than 50% from the day that I bought the house. I bought it from La Cava, built those houses. Now, now, I've been there a long time. Now, they said they're going to have 25 single units and five two-bedroom units. He said, mentioned intellectuals, will probably go into those single units. Well, as far as I know, most of the intellectuals are going downtown with the new apartments, not on Ridge Road or Jordan Lane. So the next thing is the traffic mentioned. Like I said, Jordan Lane has increased more than 50% in all the years since the day I bought the house. That's number one. If I was a little younger, I would sell the house and move somewhere else or go to another state because Connecticut is inefficient. The taxes in this state is killing everybody. That's right. It's killing everybody, so I look at it this way. First of all, that building on the corner is an ugly building, as far as I'm concerned. Second of all, it should have been knocked down a long time ago, and it wasn't. Thirdly, it should be only single homes built there. So I realize, no matter what I say, Councilman here and the mayor, whatever, will do whatever they figure. But you're going to make money with this by them paying taxes. But then the valuations of the houses on Ridge Road and those on Jordan Lane here, the valuation will go down. But our taxes keep going up. They don't go down. So personally, I'm against it. You know? And not only that, I live next... I'm the second house from the corner. And it's very difficult for someone to get out of my parking lot there on Jordan Lane. Cars coming down very fast, especially those that take care of the snow. They go down so fast that the snow goes all the way to the sidewalk. <clears throat> you know, I know when I used to do the snow. Okay? And I've been legally blind now for 13 years. So I haven't been able to drive a car. I'm not a young man. I'm 92 years old. I'm World War II veteran. Okay. So that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you very much. You know what, I'm his son. I still live there too. The house under my name now too. If you guys had any smarts, 
knock that building down with the taxpayer money that all these good people pay you guys and just make a green space, help the environment, help the people in the town instead of putting in more apartments, more transient people who live here only for the apartment for a short amount of time, but vote to increase everybody's taxes every time you guys put one of those uh, thing, things on to, to add more taxes like water or uh, to build, build schools or anything else. Thank you. Right next door to this building, so I want to know what the impact is going to be to my property. So, will could, my value excuse, go excuse down? me, excuse me. I know it's, it's sometimes hard to tell who's oh, talking. Right? I'm sorry, excuse me. <laughs> could you? I, I live right next door to the building. Introduce yourself and my give me your address. My name is Maria Marrera, and I live right next door. What's the address? 182 Ridge Road. Okay, so I want to oh, know is how is that going to affect my property? If they're going to put a fence line against my property, there's a fence there right now. Are they going to add a fence to it? Because I don't want to look at the building. So interesting. I, he didn't uh, address that earlier, but we will ask him. Um, I, and, I heard and of him saying he's going to put up a fence, but I don't know where the fence was going to be. Fair enough. Because fair enough. then it's going to be if I'm on my deck and I'm going to have all these people on the other side. So he's, he's described a fence along the property line that's, goes, that's along the property owner you just heard on. Yeah, uh, good on that Lane. side, the Jordan Lane. But the chain fence was put in when the school came in, which, which we requested that they put up the fence because the kids kept coming over to my property. So we had to tell them to put a fence up. What we're doing is we're doubling the planting that's along your property line anyway with evergreen trees pursuant to the 15 foot requirement for uh, evergreen trees so they will block up the entire building. Not not on not on day one, I'm sure. I know, not on day one. Six to seven, we're six to seven feet high when we plant them. But you've seen the, it's the same species of the trees mm -hmm. that are there. And I'm also worried about traffic because when the buses were there, I could not even get into my own property because they used to block the, the whole road. They used to come out of their buses, put cigarettes, buds all over my property. Everything was always dirty. I mean, I, if I had to come home to take my mom to the doctor, I could not even get in. I mean, the winter time was even worse. Uh, I mean, my entire property was always dirty every day. I mean, I have to literally go out there and lay broom all the buzzed, uh, what do you call it, cigarette butts out of my driveway every time. So I know with the increased traffic, people going in, with my, with my side would be a little easier than on the, on the Jordan Land side because the Ridge Road, you have a area to go in and then your area to come out, and that's right next to the light. My concern is there now that they move the walkway further back for the lights, the walkway, the lights for people to walk by. Oh, you're, you're talking about the, the new sidewalk? Uh, I'm okay. talking about the lights, the, the walk lights. Yeah. The they moved them walk. back. They moved them back mm -hmm. because of the accidents that occurred. So now this traffic coming out, the light person who was walking across the way is almost near that entrance to go out. <coughs> So that's my concern is people coming out, people trying to cross the street. Okay. To the blind side. Yeah. Uh, my name is Maria Marrera as well. <laughs> and he asked for sisters. But my concern, all the points that everyone made was very good points. Yeah. But I, I agree with the gentleman about the millennials. How are you going to attract millennials down here? Because yes, they, will, they are downtown. They are taking all the new apartments. Downtown is running out of space for the millennials and as well as the building next to the bridge that is being built again, <coughs> how are you going to attract people for there? What's going to happen is you're going to end up having Section 8 there, which is probably going to lower our property levels, you know, <laughs> lower, and I don't know what else is going to be over there. I mean, but I've, We've been there, what, 38, 39 years in that property. So we've gone through the phases. I mean, I love it when it was a blind school. It was wonderful. But when it came into CMC, that was our nightmare. And not only that, during that time, those kids used to come over the, over the fence into our property. I don't know how many times I had to call the cops because they, they kept complaining that we had like dangerous stuff in our yard. I says, well, first of all, we have this in our yard because we're building the garden. 
there's no reason for the kids to come over our yard. That's why we have to ask you to put a fence up so they know the difference between one property and the other. I don't know how many, things, many times they, they send anything over, the, over the, the fence line. So I'm concerned when he says there's only going to be four or five kids, possibly six or seven. Well, how do I know that? They're going to have a lot of kids on their yard. They're going to be start throwing things over my yard. Stuff is going to happen. So that I'm concerned about that because uh, when you say like five, six kids, 26, 26, 32 units, I'm looking at 64 cars in that property because you might have husband and wife, they got two cars. Or three. Where, where are you gonna put them? Are they gonna put parking spaces against my fence line? I don't want that. Well, right now there's no parking space. Yes. I know, right. but that's right. what concern is. I'm looking at 32 park, I'm looking at 32 families. I'm looking at 64 cars. So, so I can, as I'm an engineer, okay? That's not what's going to happen. I know, I mean, but that's what I'm thinking about I, because I, I, two, I understand, two car families. It doesn't work that way. I know, but that's what I'm looking <laughs> at. I know. I mean, yeah, like with the right. Mr. Uh, Mr. Kennedy said, you know, it's a good thing to they, they're doing something to this property, something they'll clean it up because all summer long we've been calling in the town to come and do the lawn, clean it up because it was always a, a, an eyesore. So, but there's pros and cons to this. One thing I'm concerned is that my property value goes down. That's the one my main concern. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Is there somebody else who wishes to speak? Yes, sir. My name is Mario Damasi. I live on 236 Ridgecrest Circle. I'm neighbor to the Wethersfield open area. I'm neighbor to 170 Ridge Road. And my concern is if they're going to extend it to come down a new property with a parking or recreation or whatever. There's no expansion beyond the current property. They don't own the other property. So they're not going to come down into the Wethersfield open area? No. That's my concern. And if there are going to be some few kids in the building that don't require any recreation for the kids, a playground or something. It's a good point. Uh, we will ask them. Thank right. you. Thank you. Uh, anybody else? I'm not seeing a hand go up immediately. I'll, I'll ask the applicant to come back and join us and uh, we'll go through our the topics that we heard. <clears throat> I don't know if you were taking notes, but uh, let me just start with the whole uh, traffic and access from the back uh, parking area that's coming out on Jordan Lane and clarify for me. Now, you, you as the applicant have gone to the DOT to get your to at least start the process of getting a permit from DOT. And because um, for those of you out there, the state of Connecticut owns Jordan Lane. And so as they modify the opening from that back lot onto Jordan Lane, they have to go to the state of Connecticut. They have to go to DOT to get a permit. So as part of that process, you went to them and Mr. Harlow sent you a letter that said you need to be concerned about left turn people coming over the hill sight line. Right, the Harlow memo, you guys talked about a Harlow memo? We didn't mention a Harlow memo. Oh, I'm sorry. One of the, she I'm sorry, one of the, <laughs> so, so, well -researched so neighbor. yeah, so, <laughs> I'm so tired, thank you. but not that tired. <laughs> so, it, it obviously came, Chuck I, Harlow must have written something to you guys. Is that true? Do you guys have that memo? Is, is there something, is, this, right here. Oh, okay. is that to us? Yeah, it's. Yeah, yeah, oh, he's yeah. our, he's our, he's our, uh, yeah. yeah, to, to Mr. Plant, yeah, okay. What's so, the question? Yeah, so, so actually all I was really getting at, because I think I understood why that letter was there, and I'm kind of letting everybody know that it's as part of a permit application process that you started, permit discussion that you started with DOT, and their concern was, that you know you you do have problems with sight line looking to the left over the crest of the hill and i think we've heard that the neighbors today have to wait till the light tur turns in order to feel safe coming out that situation really can't be changed no. dot wasn't telling you to change that 
that would cost you millions of dollars to cut the hillside down to try and get sight lines, right? right. I think basically their, their letter and the response has been since the traffic levels no, is the same size of parking lot. We're just the, the, and as I said, we are pulling back a little bit from the adjacent neighbor, getting rid of extraneous um, pavement. So have a amorphous kind of 60s pavement area. We actually, it's very concise. So the, the big thing was it's substandard for the access way going to the road pursuant to the regulations. So we've gone and they, they agree that it's safer to widen it to 24 feet and wider in the return so the trucks can, emergency vehicles can go in and out and not come out and cross the line. Fair enough. So from, not, from 19 feet, as you come out to Jordan Lane from right. 19 to 24. Yeah. 24 and that's really the biggest change you're making from that parking right. area. Right. Yeah. Right. And uh, regarding, well, first of all, I'd like to thank all the neighbors who came out to speak. I, I, I sincerely, honestly appreciate people coming out for this kind of meeting. Um, there was comments on traffic. Um, of course, from the existing use right now, there's going to be an increased crash because there's, there's nothing there. But um, a question was asked before about whether the traffic study took into account the actual numbers from the pre prior use as compared to a, you know, from out of a book, if you would. And I, I mean, a, a, the, reading the thing, it was out of a book, but listening to the neighbors talk, it certainly appears that the, um, at least the CCMC use operated like a typical school with buses queuing up and people coming and going. And an apartment, you know, multifamily is going to have, you know, in the morning, you know, a trip every, every couple minutes, every few minutes or so, and then, and then very, very little during the middle of the day, and then in rush hour of trip every few minutes. And that, you know, that's grossly exaggerated, you know, oh, it, 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 but, but it's, you know, you know how that works. Yep. And um, also there was comments about, um, about the number of kids school children and whether if I guess not sure the nature of you know the concern but the the um, study that estimated two to four kids didn't just pull purely ther theoretical numbers it used um, the uh, uh, apartments and in, 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 sorry apartments in town called the village apartments which everybody's probably familiar with which has 294 units and according to the Board of Ed there are 18 um, public school children out of 294 units, and using you know that example, you'd get two here. So if it's doubled, you get four. So it's not just theoretical numbers, you know. I mean, of course, no one can completely predict the future, but it's but it's based on what's already going on in town, and whether or not you know a one-bedroom apartment is going to have 20 people living in. I don't know how to address that. I could, it'd be, it'd be easier to do that in a single family house than a single, you know, one bedroom apartment. I'll just leave it at that. Yeah. Right, actually, I'll, I'll ask our, our town planner here if he's got any thoughts on that issue. Uh, parking demand. Um, I know you, you haven't got the traffic person here, but maybe Peter could help. That comes right out of a book. Is 1.5 the number that they use for this? 1.5 is the is the minimum required in your zoning regulations based on the it's based on the number of units rather than the the bedroom type and style so uh, I think they are either right on or over by one space if I remember correctly I would have been at 48 and we're at 49 okay there is um, if you're looking at the site plan uh, an excess paved area that they are I believe proposing to use for uh, outside uh, recreational space. Um, so, if uh, the situation presents itself, they have that opportunity as surplus if they needed to come back in and, you know, express uh, the need uh, for that. Uh, but you know, the bottom line is they are meeting um, the requirements of the regulations. Uh, I obviously. Yeah, you know, and, and I, I am somewhat comforted by the number of one bedrooms versus two bedrooms. So I think that's also going to uh, uh, help with that. Um, so, um, you know, there is an opportunity if it presents itself to continue to maintain additional parking on site if the need presents itself. Um, there's also, um, once again, if the need presents itself, the um, bus drop off area in the front. Uh, could uh, and I don't believe you've counted any of that in as as parking 
could be uh, also striped because of its width uh, as a series of parking spaces as well. So there's an opportunity if there is a problem to uh, add to the uh, c capacity on site uh, without changing uh, the nature of the site plan. Thank you. Could you um, address, we had a, a question about the extra outbuilding, what's your plans for that and recreational area? Yeah, okay. Uh, the building, the annex building, we're going to keep a part of, a very small part of it will be for maintenance office. Um, and we're not going to encourage storage from, from, there won't be storage from the units there, but the excess part will be a social room. They could be a flexible space. They could either have a, a workout equipment in there. It's up to the owners. Um, eventually, the homeowners association, but we thought it would be nice to keep them, renovate the building as is and use it for social space. There is already an existing playground, if you can call it that, with, with a seesaw and a little play structure with uh, an area of impact attenuation material, basically sand, and uh, we're going to maintain that right now. Uh, we also, in our plan, increased, we moved the sidewalk a bit and, and spread it out and put some bench areas on it, but try to grade it so that there was an activity lawn area so people could throw a frisbee or kick a ball or whatever. But right now we're going to leave the playground equipment because it's there. And if there's really no need for it, eventually they'll pull it up. You know, there, there's a... It's in the, it's in the back. It's, it's on the lower level in the back. In the back, right. Yeah, I'm sorry, I, I thought... So it's way down the grade. We spread this out so we can grade this relatively flat. So there's some usable space for the, as part of the open space requirements for the, for the zone. Uh, we have passive and active recreation areas. We have area, and we create, by having an area here, that free this up so that if you wish to have a community garden, you know, they can have little garden plots if they wish here as well, by keeping it all in green open space, and we have a few seating areas here that are set into that existing retaining wall that we're not increasing or anything, but what, then we're screening it, of course, we're all planting. Aside from perimeter buffer, we screen it you know, generally here, so it's safe. Okay. But it's not a visual impediment to the adjacent name. Okay. Just to clarify for the, the ladies that asked the question, the playground area or the plate, there's there's the structure, there's the sand and everything that's right next to the house on Ridge, the, the very first no, house no, on Ridge. No, no, that's, that's I'm, I'm, I'm just clarifying for Yeah, that. it's hundreds of feet and, and 30 some feet in grade away from them. But everything that is directly next to their home is being redone and regraded, is that correct? Modern, we're just leveling it out. Right now there's a lot of broken bituminous in here. We're pulling it up and making it lawn and planting and then we're, we're increasing the double Yep. The loaded perimeter buffer as well. Yep. But right now, there's a, if you saw in the plan, there's an amorphous blob of broken petunias on so you want to pull that out and, and put topsoil in there and, and have a, a turf lawn. Yep. So, uh, my, I, my understanding correctly is that the plate will be at the bottom of the hill. It exists already. It's, that it's already there. there. It's the yeah, it's way, way at the bottom. Because the top used to be a playground, which would be like half No, we're plant. removing all that. <laughs> but so, the plate already been removed. Yes. Could, so could I, let me just, unless it's on that topic, is it on that topic? Just two questions to him. Go ahead. Uh, the rec building, was that presented to the uh, architectural review? Yes. And they said okay? We're renovating the building exactly, I, clarify, and cleaning it up exactly like as part of the program that we're cleaning the main building. Similar? Yes. Okay, I, I didn't see it, but uh, the tree size along the southern border, how high did you say those would be when planted? Six, 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 six to seven feet minimum. Thank you. Uh, I do want to say, since you brought it up and my creaky memory is coming back, they actually specifically liked the approach that we're putting all the utilities underground, especially the electric, because right now there's a giant electric pole leaning into the building, and we're going to put all that underground and clean that building up. They were happy about that and get rid of As I said, I wasn't joking. There, there's a, two AC units in the back that, you know, are the size of a small Buick, basically, and they're totally extraneous now. We're taking those out, and we're cleaning that whole perimeter up. So, 
which is which is a good segue to where I was going. Let's talk about the window units or potential for window units. What I understood was there are no window units being proposed. You're putting uh, We're proposing removing windows. Right. Cent central air so there's no need for window units and you will have uh, the facilities blower and or condenser out back on the ground mm -hmm. and potentially some on the roof. Now all the ones on the ground have, a, as you see in the landscape plan, are, are specifically located to be screened and not seen from the windows of the basement floors. Okay. So let's talk about the ones on the roof, right? Um, how high is the parapet up there, and is it reasonable to assume that they will, that that will hide the likely AC units? Uh, Gail Plant. Uh, parapet's about two feet, maybe two and a half feet tall. It, in my opinion, it is reasonable that it would hide the uh, potential AC units on the roof. Are, are they single unit AC units? Does that make sense? I mean, yeah, each unit's going to have an in, individual uh, system. We, we got to go through the MEP design still, but you know, we want some energy efficient, uh, you know, slim models, you know, low profile. So we would want to see them as little as possible. What what yeah, we all what you've heard tonight is I, a I don't want to put anything out in front of the building or sticking above the parapet that's you know distraction. I, and I have a I have a comfort level that single unit units are not that big and would behind a two and a half foot parapet be if not completely concealed reasonably well concealed. What we're comparing it to is the problems that we had with the high school and they were industrial and they were much bigger than a individual unit unit. No, we're not gonna put a chiller on the roof. I mean, uh, I don't think you're gonna get a vantage point from the sidewalk on Ridge Road on top of the four story building and definitely not from the back, um, in my opinion. All right, thank and, you. And likely not from Mr. Kennedy's house across the street? I don't think so. Okay. Could you just, uh, will there be any ground air conditioning related equipment that gets close to any of the property lines to the uh, east or to the south, or will they be well away? The ones that exist now are here and here. We're pulling them back into the interior in here and okay. here. So they're they are significantly behind the building and away from the perimeter property. Okay. Right up against up against the building because they can't see your fingers. So, right. You mentioned so, there's landscaping going to be around those units. Yeah, well, sort of the plan and the uh, landscape plan. One thing I want to argue: we're hoping to, and I think it's more of a, a trend now for younger people who we assume are going to be the user population on this. We have these existing, you know, um, they call them balconies, but really they're they're escape areas to go down the fire escape which we're going to clean up their brick, and we're going to clean put nice railings to replace the ones that are coming, some metal ones that are falling apart there. And as you know, then we have a note that we're going to redo all the metal uh, fire escapes on this and, you know, make them start, make sure they're structurally sound, clean them up, paint them, make everything the same. Underneath these right now, they're just kind of amorphous areas with chain link fence around. We're going to actually convert them into nice areas to store bicycles. You know, uh, one will one will have the you know like play equipment. They want to have a bungee cord croquet on this, but on this one, we'll just say have all the bicycles. We actually put in an extra handicap accessible sidewalk system that goes connects the bus line drop off area on the main road that comes down and then gets onto our ramp system up into the front of the building, uh, which will also encourage. You know, so we're trying to do things to encourage the bus use, which we believe, and also our alternative modal use of, such as bicycles. Those that uh, can be used for escaping on a snowy day like tomorrow. They're covered. They're it's covered, yeah, yeah, but not from the outside. No, but they're, they're ex they already exist there. Yeah, I know. Yeah, okay. So In this day and age, yeah, but we'll have a we you have a open fire escapes. We have one set of maintenance, though, for this. So not in my book. So, so those will those will continue as a fire escape. I'm sorry. What was the question? Is Fuss and O'Neill gonna talk about things at all, or did I miss it? 
No, Professor Manuel's not here tonight, George. Neither of, them. Neither of them are here. Traffic is traffic folks are not here today. Oh, okay. So this is what? Well, there's nobody here specific to talk to the traffic, but that's not what you were getting at a minute ago. So yeah, we were uh, talking about the fire escapes. Questions uh, <laughs> on the accidents, stuff like that. Okay. And the driveway, north driveway on Ridge Road bothers me. So, you know, and I know when to talk about it. On the, on the fire escapes, are those fire escapes? Is that what you're trying to tell us? Are they still fire escapes in the in the book? Isn't that what you were kind of asking too? Yeah, but I got to clarify those. Uh, I mean, inside the building there are two existing exit stairs, so the fire escapes are not required. So I think we we could review it with the fire marshal to make sure we can get rid of them. We we could get rid of them. I mean, they are um, not necessary. So. So so right now, mm. right now the plan had been to allow them to to still be there and. And the only people who could use them would be the people who had the end units? Correct. So, I mean, yeah, it doesn't make 100% sense to keep them if we don't, you know. It, it. As long as the fire marshal doesn't need them, right? Correct, yes. Yeah. Right. So, so one of the... goes through the single family unit at the end to go out of the building now what are you saying generally no but fire? if there's a major emergency yeah they could you know they want to open the door and no. Bring it out. but no, there, there, there are as i'm concerned there, there are two interior exit stairs yeah i know yep. but why are you using those for that purpose so, so george i don't i don't think they're intended to be fire ex Escapes per se, but they are up. They are outside. They were. They are exterior access stairs to the end units. That's primarily how they'll be used. We did hear a, a question from uh, the public about privacy issues with those, um, and and perhaps visual from there down. Could you help us understand when you're on the south end of the building? Can you see? over in, into the Ridge Road, Ridge Road properties. It's not from the fourth floor, it's only from the third floor. Is that what I'm seeing? First, second. First and second floor. I imagine you could see from the window or from the fire escape. They're at the same, the same height, so. Yeah, you know, whatever you can see, you can see from the, opening the window or from standing the fire escape. Right. Thank you. put covenant or restrictions on the exterior use of those. <coughs> thank, thank you, and that, that's a good point. We have done that on uh, one of the other proposals. So they, so they don't become somebody's exterior living room. Right. And hence, uh, you know, uh, mm -hmm. but we can, uh, we'd be more than happy to put a covenant on that. Thank you. Other, other questions? That's, the, that's my list of topics that I heard from the public. Somebody else help me with others that I may have missed? The, did we actually talk about the fence? And because one thing is, if we're replacing oh, a fence height. on one side to be one type, are we are we going to leave a chain link fence on the other side? I mean, I'd, sorry, I'd, we didn't we didn't get the height right. So what was the height that, that you were th what was the height that you were thinking about on the eastern side? Oh, it's, it's and type six, it's six feet. It's six feet, and on the southern side, there's going to be a double row of um, of, of, of evergreens, it, so it would be different. So the plan is to leave the, the chain adjacent neighbors so high that if we put a six foot fence or it wouldn't block anything. Yeah. Okay. So it's a, the real solution is to put a strong planting there of, of rapidly growing needle evergreens and let them get through the thing. Per the, and it meets that requirement. Okay. Is is there a specific type of fence that you were looking at? Um, that six foot fence along the eastern side. Was there something in particular you were? Planning? That would look the same on one side and the other? Correct. Well, uh, well yeah. I, you don't want to give Jordan Lane neighbors the bad view? I can't. 
Isn't that right? You can't. And, and, you don't want to give, and you don't want to give your tenants the bad view either. So you're not sure. looking at them, from, and you're not, you won't be seeing the inside of the fence. You will see the nice side of the, the fence. And if we can internalize it on our side, even for the framing, that's fine. All right. Um, May I ask the landscaping question? Sure. Can, can you come to the mic? Yeah, thank you. I don't know whether this is truly representational, but are you planning on doing any additional planting there of tall, it, of tall trees? This is all what that is. I, 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 I kind of glossed over. We're, we're, these are South all new street trees. West corner of the property. All on here, and then in, that's an existing tree. The light, the lightest colors, those are the existing. We're augmenting it with larger, upright trees. They're all deciduous. Uh, and then, of course, we have the line. So the answer is yes, you yeah. have additional yes. tall trees there. That's right. The reason I bring that up is several of us have some nice views of the Glastonbury Hills, mm -hmm. which tall trees would obviously destroy. I'm kind of rocking a hard place. Okay. We can. We'll talk about it. When. When. Thank. I, fair enough. I guess I. I understand that. I don't think they'll be taller than the building. That's what I was getting at. I don't know how much taller they were than the building. What kind of trees? What kind of trees? When you say street trees, how high do they get? Is that higher than the building? No, we 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 take a couple of varieties of uh, of oak as well as uh, I think we have oak, linden, and maple, and they're all modest size street trees. But the reason is for the view. Two, it's got to be in scale. The building three, we have overhead lines near there, so they've all been picked to be more columnar and shorter than a standard tree of that variety. Because I'm very well, nothing irritates me more than doing a street tree planting and knowing that you know you, you, should, you should know that right away. That there's overhead lines, we have to right. get a species and a cultivar that, that's more right. columnar that deals with that. Sort of things might be pretty much at the size we're showing here. Right. It, of course, if the commission would like to couple out in, in strategic locations, the, I, uh, I'm, you know. I'm sure that would be easy enough right. to change the variety if we thought <laughs> necessary. But well. in general, we we wouldn't want them. Bigger than the building in the first place, right? And so I'm, I can't say. Do get that big, uh, yeah, I wouldn't think so. 40, 50 feet to the top, right? It's, no, so it's. Yeah, it's about it's, four, almost 50. It's 48. Yeah. Okay. So, so I, don't, I honestly don't know the view well enough. I can picture that there is because that side of Ridge has a view. But are, do you actually see something over the, the building or are you seeing a view around the building on either side of it? Under, okay. So, so I think it's so the, you're looking down the gap. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. I think it's the very existence of the street trees that would yeah, do yeah. it. Is what he's talking yeah. about. The ones okay. in, the, in the very south of the property. All right. Other questions? The so, so they, I, I already know. Thank you. We'll, we'll answer it. But I already know the answer. We've heard this many times. Uh, Section 8 is not really a consideration here. That's uh, not the intention. Weather, Weathersfield's a good town, and it's not Hartford. What's going to happen if you don't get enough, uh, not enough rent? Is say nobody wants to pay to whatever you're, you're, you're asking. It's all, all of a sudden, now that you got the zoning, is it going to turn into Section 8? No, I mean, that happens everywhere. You, you just got to find the right tenants. Uh, that's why we hire uh, Berkshire Hathaway to... To do that. What about the, this guy said homeowners association? Is there a possibility of turning into condos? N I think that just made oh, I just missed Yeah, that. no, that's really more to keep the property intact and uh, you know maintained, you know, so there's not a couch or you know six grills on a porch. You know, we want a respectable building too. Yeah, I, th I think that's more about the tenant management than right. it is. It's not a homeowner's management, right? Correct. It's just yeah, it's a, tenant, a tenant, tenant, tenant committee or something. Tony? I was going to follow up with that status of the rental rates. Have you done that analysis on what the rents would be? And does it include electricity and heat? Uh, we're still trying to figure out the electricity. 
Uh, probably will not include heat, but the current market, market conditions seem to be about twelve to fourteen hundred dollars a unit, maybe a little more for a single, and then sixteen to eighteen hundred for a double in Weathersfield. Before we started, you, you passed out this document here with half a dozen projects that you've worked on, or L. Jackson Construction Development LLC, and uh, there are a wider range of projects, some, some uh, multifamily, New Britain, Walkett, a um, variety of different towns. Tell us a little bit about your history and, and the type of properties that you've worked on, and is this comparable to some of your success stories? Uh, this is comparable to some successful projects we've done. I've done about $60 million in construction over the past 20 years. Uh, we do anything from single family residential. Um, we've even done bathrooms recently. But uh, we're trying to focus more on the uh, multifamily and you know grow our rental portfolio. I was asking about the rental rates because I would estimate the property tax on this would yield at least $100,000 a year approximately? Have you done any feasibility studies? I mean, I looked into that briefly. We're hoping about 80000 but, you know, time will tell. I'm sure it's more than that. <laughs> <laughs> Until the abatement. Right. <laughs> um, and those will be market rents, as was questioned anyway on it. Absolutely. I don't, I don't personally want to deal with Section 8. We're, we're not in that business. It's a specialty. Without the traffic uh, engineers here from Fuss and O'Neill, do you have any immediate response to this 40 to 60 cars per unit? I agree with our chairman that it's unlikely, but uh, what if two people come in and, and uh, you know, we get a lot of couples in there? Any thoughts on that? And should we be v visiting that with the extending the traffic study going back to uh, Commissioner I Rich Roberts? I don't think you should out. because we're, I, it appears we fall in the uh, requirement, you know, for the minimum spaces. And uh, DOT didn't come back with any comments for Ridge Road or Jordan Lane as far as this having a substantial impact. Okay. You do have the open space buffer to the south side, which clearly <coughs> will addresses the concerns of Ridgecrest Circle and those people there. So that would be not right. The immediate neighbors, those two or three that spoke on Jordan Lane, do you have any specific comments to them? I think you've addressed the issue with the plannings, the, the fences there, the traffic patterns based on the study that has been done already. You're confident knowing that that's been satisfied and it should not have a direct effect on the marketability of their properties? Is it your feeling that their market values will not go down? I don't foresee them going down, and we're going to make a large multi-million dollar investment in cleaning up a building, you know, <coughs> and, and a site. You know, we're going to put four and a half million dollars into this. Okay. Four and a half million? Roughly. Okay. And uh, lighting. The lighting schematic uh, hasn't come up. How much direct or indirect lighting will affect Mr. Kennedy across the street? Will it be more intense or less intense? Will uh, the parking lighting in the back? Affect those neighbors to the Jordan Lane side. There is a, a lighting plan with full photometrics. We actually redid it because there was some light trespass before to the southeast, uh, no, I'm sorry, the northeast corner of property. If you've been out on the site now, maybe it's in the picture. I think uh, we've been debating this. We think the state. Said, oh, hey, we got a couple of highway lights lying around. Let's put them in there. They're 48, 45 feet high here. Uh, the standard highway grade, Overhead. you know, um, non baffled, straight sure was. highway lights. We're going to get rid of all of those, go to ornamental lights, 14 feet minimum, uh, maximum height. As you can see, the, the ones that are adjacent to the property have back shielding. There's no light trespass. Actually, uh, it, it, uh, Peter just got that role plan. We specifically just changed that as well. So there's nothing higher than 14 feet as opposed to the 45 feet that are out there right now. Um, so there will be significant, significant less lighting anywhere on the site and there certainly won't be an off the site. It'll be sufficient lighting for the parking for security in the back. Oh, absolutely. And all the foot candle values are there, but we've also made sure there's no light trespass off of the site. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
myself. I, I know you. I know you had said earlier. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I know you had said earlier that you're going to figure out with the windows whether some need to be replaced, whether there's enough that need to be replaced that you would just redo all of them. And it sounds like you haven't made a final decision on that yet. Uh, we haven't fully investigated the windows. I'd rather see, you know, as this elevation is with, with newer windows, but you know, if they've got a few more years left in what's there, right. you know, we'd, we're gonna have to consider that. And I guess I, I would, you know, I would echo that. I think if there is an opportunity to do new, and if it's going to be really nice, blended in with the with the resurfacing that you're doing on the on the brick and everything, I would encourage you to to consider that. But at a minimum, uh, I wouldn't think you'd want to you know be repairing a third of the windows in such a way that you're going to have like a mismatched set of looks out no, there. So. No, if we can't keep them all uniform, we'll have to do something differently. Okay. Yeah, that was my question too. It was pretty much the exact same thing that if you're going to do some you have to do them all otherwise you're not going to have a homogenous looking building mm -hmm. oh, uh, agreed Any questions <clears throat> any glass comments from the public <laughs> yeah, I have a lot of trees in my garden, but not Can't win. No. <laughs> They're going to be oaks that come down in February. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> trees that are specifically for the social, uh, yeah, for that open space that's near my property. Near your property. Are very, those are ornamental trees. I don't think any of them get over 15 feet. The evergreens, right? It's, and then, it's, but on the, on the outside and adjacent to your property are all the evergreens in there. Yeah. So no leaves. That's correct. <laughs> yeah. All right. And, and Tom, Tom, if you want to go Can again. Can I ask a couple more questions? Sure. I'm not sure I understood correctly. Are there going to be no HVAC units on the face of the building? That's correct. That's represented in the drawing? And if there That's are HVAC units on the roof, is it going to look like that? Drawing. Because I know for a fact, on Walker Hill Road, we all approved an $85 million high school that looked like that architect's rendering. And that's not what we got. So do they have the opportunity to make all kinds of changes? And yeah. say, we thought we wouldn't be able to see the HVAC units from Mr. Kennedy's house, but we were mistaken. Sorry. Yeah, as you can tell, it's a bit of a hot button topic. So that, yeah, the, that's, that's also my concern because I, my deck is, is an upper level, so I can see right through the rooftop of the neighboring. So I want to make sure I don't get to see that either. Do know, it's coming in. So the scenario that they're discussing was the high school was going to go geothermal, didn't pan out, had to go with HVAC units up on the roof, and they ended up being very large. In this scenario, there's a plan. We know, you know or you're going to be able to design to something that we can hold you to a little bit more soundly than maybe in past experiences. So I think we're just looking for a little bit more assurance of that. I think we can accommodate that the, the rooftop units will not stick above the parapet. So I mean, it turns out that five units end up extending over. Can you do 10 and make them lower? and? spread them out a little bit more, similar to what we've seen in the Borden and other, other locations. I mean, it's, it's possible. We're just going to have to... It's just a design exercise. Yeah, we just have to do a good layout and get, you know, pick good products. Slightly further from the edge of the building helps, too. Yeah. And yeah. I, I believe that... I asked to ask about how tall the units are, and I think you about, said like... About 30 inches. 30 inches, and there's a two some foot, of these. So four mm -hmm. stories up, you're not going to see that. Right. Not, not significantly, anyways. I, I, I don't want to say you're not going to see them, period, okay. right? But... It, it's not a high school situation, and there are not going to be window units. My concern Correct. would be the noise. These are fairly silent units, nothing compared to what the high school buzz was all about, <laughs> so to speak. Sorry, I'd say. One more, if I could. Is this uh, project contingent on a tax abatement? 
and can we find out if that's um, part of the plan now or after the project is approved? So, so just to help the record, that's Mr. Mazzarella. I, I, again, okay. Peter, can you speak to that? I think I know the answer, but I, no one's approached uh, my office for tax. We haven't even had that conversation, so I can't say that they may not come in. Or, but uh, I have not had any conversations uh, about that regarding this project. Yes, sir. Thank you. And, and that was Mr. Kennedy for the record. Yes, and it, the answer is the regulations factor in that for visitors and, their, and, their, and you, for the tenants. Do you have specific visitor parking well, proposed? We, we made the annex parking with signage saying for visitor and tenant only. And then the upper, the upper one obviously is for tenants parking. Yeah. Okay. I know you got that 49 is the regulation, but if you're bringing in, if you want millennials, that 49 is a crap number. My kids are millennials. One of them lives in an apartment, a two bedroom apartment with three adults and three cars. Another another one just moved in to, to, a, to a two bedroom, apart, a three bedroom apartment with three adults and three cars. I'm just saying, even if you have a one bedroom apartment, Half the time they're going to have a girlfriend or a boyfriend living with them, helping to share the rent. So that's two cars per unit, pretty much. If you want to go 1.5, that's fine. All your two bedrooms are going to have at least two cars, possibly a third, if they're sharing the rent with a, with a third person. On top of that, if they're not sharing the rent, they're still going to have boyfriends and girlfriends coming at all hours. So for every one millennial inside one of those apartments, you're going to have another one there most of the time. So you got to figure that you're going to need at least 10 guest parking on top of what you've got for, for normal. If you've only got, if you've got 32 units, you're looking at probably 40, 49 cars just for, for the tents. So Let alone the, the visitors. You're, you will end up parking in front of Mr. Kennedy's house uh, all up and down the okay, road. That won't affect, affect my father here because on Jordan Lane, nobody wants to park there because everybody who parks there ends up losing a fender. So, so I'm sorry, I, I can't remember your last name. Urso. 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 That was, for the record, that was the Ursos. Um, I'm going to simply say we're not going to argue about the 1.5. That's in our regs. That's what they're required to do. And it is based on historical, s historical records of what parking requirements are per unit. Okay, so we're not going to really, I'm not going to ask them to defend it any, any is, further is than that. No, no, I can, I can. Do the required ticketing everybody who has a parking on, uh, on Ridge Road overnight. If that were to become an issue, that it would be well, taken care of that way. Okay. It if it was apparent, given the uh, final build, you know, uh, renting out of all the tenant space, as Peter brought, uh, pointed out, we, without increasing any coverage or creating any more problems at intersections, we have the capacity uh, to have you know, visitor parking added to the f area behind the south wing, as well as some on the you know, parallel uh, roadway parking on the driveway, because the driveway is 20, it's 23.9 feet wide. Uh, your one-way requirements, 11 feet for minimum for a travel way. Uh, typically, you had, you know, if you were on parallel park, it's 10 feet wide, uh, 22 feet long. So we could, uh, I actually looked at it once, uh, and after I looked at it and mentioned it to our police, uh, to the fire chief, the wonderful guy, he goes, yeah, technically you could, but I don't want to see him there unless it becomes, you know. Unless but, it becomes an issue. It becomes an issue, but, but the point is, it, functionally, you can, you can get a, a fire truck in and through there and still have, you know, that's not the first place I'd put it, but we do have the potential on site to absorb that if it were ever If it required. became an issue. Yeah. In the front, all you'd have to do is stripe it, so that's yeah. Yeah, it's there. All right, thank you. <clears throat> additional, Dan, you've been awful quiet tonight. Any additional questions, Yolanda? Um, I had a question. I had a question about uh, the parking and also uh, what we were going to vote on. If you could just uh, show the rendering where you have. The, 
Yes, sir. Yep. So my question is, you have how many parking places proposed? 49? 49. 49. And it's currently 48. Okay. Yep. I know you got one extra. Very good. So my question is, is the 49 that will be used for the people that will be renting in the units, is that also in the in the lower parking lot? Or I'll, I'll say total. in the eastern? That's total. So that includes, so if you are um, a renter, you would either park either closer to Ridge Road or you would also find parking along the, the parking spaces along Jordan Lane. Is that correct? I'm sorry. If I'm a, if I'm a renter. You get to park either I park, here or here. So that includes the 49. So you would mm -hmm. be parking in the separate parking lot or the annex area That's like correct. you were describing. Okay. They're already there now. And we've cleaned them up. We just actually, as I said, we, we reduced the coverage and been yep. more efficient in the design. So it sounds to me that compared to, because it's a different use of space also, right? <coughs> it's a different use of space from what it was before to what it were, you're Most proposing definitely. right now. So in terms of improvements, you know, you're, you're improving the landscaping from what's out there now. So if I was to walk along your, along your property after you've done all your construction and all your improvements, it would be a considerable improvement in terms of how it's going to look, not just the facade, but also the, the landscaping and, and the traffic flow through there? That's, that's the intent. That's the plans. Also, there will be significant street trees. Right now, there's two street trees on that whole site. So you're putting more mm -hmm. yeah. street trees? One of them trees. has been heavily trimmed. <laughs> uh, we're going, that's why we're, we're you're, the requirements of uh, a tree for every 50 linear feet for the whole perimeter of the property. Mm -hmm. We're at one every 40 feet. I mean, I, I like it. I'm working for Guy because he, he th in my judgment, if I want to err on planting more, he doesn't say no. Everybody wins. So that was just the way it evolved out. So it, 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 you know, we, not, we don't meet, we exceed all the requirements mm -hmm. so that we've increased the landscaping, not only the parking area as a percentage, but we've increased, you know, easily increased around the site. You're also improving the lighting that's out there now. I, I'd say taking those things down at 45 feet and putting up ornamentals, ornamentals. at 14. Is, mm -hmm. unless, I, unless I did something really bad, that, that's a huge. So the lighting's being improved, so that aesthetically that looks better. Also, you're removing the above ground utilities, like the, I think, yes. that's, and that's all going to be underground. So visually, it'll be quite an improvement. Forget yeah. the use, how it is now, but visually for the neighborhood, it would be an improvement. Yes, there so would then, be those wires tracing down the hillside and leaning utility poles that are on site that are on site laying. That's correct. And are you adding more sidewalks? Because I see you have nice connectivity with your sidewalks right. on your, I didn't know yes. if you were yes, actually, changing. Because, remember, actually it's easier to see here. I can find the place. Oh, it's behind that one. Thank God. This is actually more useful than I thought. This before was all paved. Behind the building. Yeah. He's up against, building up, against, up against the building and behind it. Yep. Yeah, so what we've done is pulled it all out. We've landscaped a significant area of, of at least, uh, it's like 12 feet, and then or maybe 11, uh, 11 feet, we have five foot wide sidewalk. Or sit wherever we had perpendicular, I made it six feet wide. So, so if there's so a the car right there, still have a functional four plus here inside, but we have a complete sidewalk system now. It goes around, we added a sidewalk. <coughs> next to the, to Coming the down here well. to go right into the building in front. Uh, this is here, we widen and that so we can grade this out. We put bench areas for it. So yes, we, we've, we've expanded and, and also the sidewalk system here. Okay. For the internal circulation. So then the- Oh, the other thing is also we're adding there. Right now the sidewalk just ends here. We're gonna carry it out to the, so to the street here as well. So it's better. Better connection. Yeah. Good. All right. So I, I guess um, then the concerns is really just the the additional traffic, whether there is additional traffic or not. Different traffic patterns at this location from what was out there pre before. Um, I'm not sure if I really buy into the idea that there's so many less cars in this traffic letter by Mr. Harlow or, or whomever. It seems like there'd be more cars coming in and out of the facility. I'm, I'm assuming that everybody that would be in that building, half of them would be working 
to a going, you know, half may be working at home, half may be working, you know, outside their, their home. So it seems like there'll be more cars exiting and going back and forth. Mm -hmm. That's what I think. Like. That's my thought. Wealth of traffic engineering I know. certified for that. I know. They it's are. Just, traffic's a funny thing. It is funny. Because we all drive. <clears throat> you know, and, and invariably, every, you know, there's a, re, a perceptual reality. People live on that street and they drive like that. And, it, you know, any potential increase obviously exacerbates their experience. You know, for perception. But they can only, that's why traffic engineers do what they do, you know. Yeah. Yeah, it definitely is a is a, an art to it. Um, so I guess my other question, my last question is, are we, are did we want to vote today whether or not we want to make this a zone change, or are we, you know, as a as for a zone change in addition to, are we going to vote for whether or not we want to have this uh, as a like what are we what are we uh, going to be only for All right. zone change today. Is that what we'll be voting for? So I'll clarify two things. Yeah. Um, it's it's not only a zone change, but it's also a site plan approval. Today. 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 Which is what we've been doing of late when we have a zone change to try and lock the developer right, into mm -hmm. it. Right? That's what I thought. I just wanted to confirm. Okay. okay. So and so let me continue and go. I don't know if we're voting today. Let me try and summarize where I think we are. Good. Which is We've heard a lot of, we've gotten some questions from the public, we've gotten our answers to the questions that we had, um, except perhaps in a broad sense, some of the traffic topics, and I know George is, you know, is looking for more uh, traffic uh, input. Um, I personally uh, am not. <clears throat> um, I think I have a certain comfort level that's not dissimilar to what Fasanil has put forth to DOT and DOT uh, read, they don't really put an opinion in the mouth of, uh, of, of the applicant. They simply kind of accept what the applicant is saying to them as part of the permit process and they've characterized it as in Fuss and O'Neill's opinion, the traffic conditions aren't significantly changed in the use of this property to tomorrow mm -hmm. versus yesterday, mm -hmm. right? And, and I have a certain comfort in that personally. Um, the lots aren't changing, the number of spaces aren't changing, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, I don't have a need to pursue additional traffic comments, but I am looking for your input as to whether you do it or not, because it will dictate whether we need more information and are going to continue this hearing beyond tonight. That's, that's my thought. I'm comfortable with fussing on the L and the DOT, because it's what you guys do at the DOT prior to your retirement on a daily basis. I think it was confirmed by the neighbor on Ridge Road, as I had vaguely remembered, that there was, and he said it, school buses stacked up the Colgate Road, idling on an 11 degree day, lounging on his front lawn. So I guess we could probably go back to school buses and see how safe that is, is or isn't stacked all day long for people going in and out of their residence at a much different pace, not people rushing to get on school buses and trying to get onto their routes and make a time schedule. I mean, so, you know, I, I think this is an improvement for <clears throat> the overall traffic and safety of the people coming down. If you have buses stacked on Ridge Road and you're coming up to an intersection, I mean, it narrows the roadway quite a bit. So at least we don't have that stacking situation that had pre-existed. And who knows what would ever go back there if this project doesn't go in here. The pre-existing use was a school. You never know what they might do with it. Um, I, I agree with you, uh, Jim, you know, from the standpoint that I do recall the stacking, I recall the school buses, I recall the activity vividly going on on Ridge Road when the school was in effect. It's only two years ago, or three years, whatever. It's, it's not a long period of time. Um, and I, I, I do believe that we're looking at an improvement over a deteriorating piece of property. It's, but as far as traffic is concerned, we can talk about deterioration. That's another subject for this evening or, or, <clears throat> or in the future. But um, I, I, as far as the traffic is concerned, I also am con confirmed that, you know, with the traffic study and what I've heard and know personally from personal observation, that I don't see this being a gigantic traffic generator 
uh, that's going to interfere any further with the community. Excuse me, and furthermore, I mean, talk about traffic safety, egress, talk about the people on Ridge Road on the east side where these buses are stacked up. How great is it trying to get out? I mean, I'm lucky I drive a truck, so I have a little different point of view, uh, elevation. If you're just driving in a small Volkswagen, small car, and you have to back out between two buses, you, you might as well roll the dice on that one. I mean, as far as safety goes, that's, I think this is a much safer situation, just taking the buses out of this scenario. You know, also today, when you're looking at uh, what the, uh, the applicant is attempting to do as far as attracting um, millennials, and many people are working at home today, this is more common. Uh, you're going to have, that does, is not taken into consideration when we're doing some of these traffic stuff. Uh, so I, I think all in all that it's, um, it's a plus. So, so besides the traffic situation and not having somebody here specifically to answer any questions that you might have, um, are you also comfortable with the information that you've gleaned to be able to say that <clears throat> um, you know how you would vote relative to the requirements in the, in the regs, you know, that, that has to be consistent with the plan of conservation and development, that it's uh, consistent with uh, the purpose of our planning regulations, that um, the building is suitable not only in its size compared to the property, and obviously it's not changing, so how could it be <coughs> too dissimilar? Is it suitable for the intended use of, and, and uh, acceptable to the neighborhood? That kind of stuff. So do you, do you think you've gathered enough information to be able to put a position uh, forward on that issue? And if not, then again, you know, we could keep the hearing open, but if you think you're ready, we could close the hearing and move on to deliberate. Rich. Not, not to ignore your the question you just asked, but um, but I will. Are we comfortable that Derek's comments have all been addressed? I, I can't speak for the town engineer, and I, all I can do is speak for myself. I would like the opportunity to review the uh, plans I received this evening and just uh, come back to you with a uh, listing of suggested uh, conditions. There are a number of conditions in, in addition to my previous comments that I think uh, from the neighbors that uh, probably warrant some additional conditions as well. Um, so uh, I would like the opportunity. Uh, I think you can, or I, I think you can close the hearing unless you need some additional, you know, um, information from the applicant uh, tonight. But I, I would uh, respectfully suggest that um, we put it on the next agenda if, if to, to view it again and, and vote on it so that I can give you our professional uh, advice in terms of conditions that would be suitable to uh, to approve this. I, I guess if that's your inclination, I would rather keep the hearing open so that we can maintain an open dialogue with the applicant and make sure that, you know, whatever conditions you suggest, you know, can be Acceptable to them. Acceptable yep. to them. And, sure. You know, and, and to the extent that they're designed to address concerns from members of the public that they adequately do so. Sound, sounds good to me. Mm -hmm. I, I would agree, Mr. Chairman. I, I would uh, probably vote against it because I don't think I have information in two or three areas. And they're not big things, but I think they may even want to give something about the fire escapes or uh, some of the explanation from the traffic consultant and I you know it's still a little bit mm -hmm. bothersome there that's a bad intersection and um, things like that and maybe a few months I think continuing the hearing makes sense uh, because I didn't think you could close Peter and still bring in information and to discuss it. I wouldn't bring in uh, new information. I would suggest conditions that were in the record and were mentioned by the neighbors, but I think if, if you're inclined to continue this to the next meeting, there's no harm in keeping the hearing open so that you can have that dialogue. Uh, and um, to that extent, if you're gonna keep the hearing open, I don't know if I would suggest that they do bring their traffic engineer to the next so, meeting so, so that was, you can let's get that go out through of the way. Yeah, so yeah. I, and, uh, I'm perfectly okay with you ignoring my question because it's a good point. There were these <laughs> outstanding issues. Um, the, so, so,
traffic questions. Next time, let's try and get Fuss and O'Neill here. Peter did suggest that uh, Fuss and O'Neill could not make it. Oh, uh, fair enough. Um, the outstanding issue about it, how exactly are you going to think about doing the uh, fire escapes, whether they're needed or not. So let's try and get an answer from the fire marshal as to whether they're needed. And then if not, what would you do with them? What else? That in, a, in a nutshell for the moment. And you'll come back with your Yeah, I have a list, list of, of things that I've, I'll, you know, I'll meet with the applicant uh, between now and the next meeting. We'll go over all the minutia and uh, see if we can clean things up and minimize the uh, suggested the, the conditions. The applicant may have some things he wants to present yes. based upon what he's heard. I, th I think if he had presented this in the initial discussion or something not quite this is elaborate, would be further along. I really do. Yeah. All right. So I, I um, just one real quick for Fuss and O'Neill's when they when they come in. I think um, one thing that we were discussing with the other apartment complex on the same road is there was a general discussion of everybody's going to be heading north and that sort of thing. So just sort of a general dialogue of are people going up Jordan to hit Silas Dean to go north to Hartford? Are people really going to try to take a left and then take another left on the ridge in order to hit 15 and to go to Hartford? So, so we're not just talking traffic volume. You want to projections. Honestly, I'm, yeah, that's a good point. I'm, I'm with him in terms of Absolutely. it's not a huge difference in terms of traffic generation, like pure numbers of cars, but if if somebody is thinking that people are going to take a left and a left more often, that's more of an issue than if people decide, hey, screw this interchange, or screw this uh, intersection, I'm going down Jordan. Um, you know, but that's, that's the sort of dialogue that helps this meeting because I think there's a concern that we're adding more traffic to Ridge because we're already adding more traffic to Ridge for one building that we're, that's being put in now. Um, so just sort of a general high-level discussion of that, not pure like there's seven cars per whatever. Yeah. <laughs> that boys me. I mean, I'm a, yeah. not a traffic engineer. <laughs> I've been on here for 40 years. Yeah. So I hear it. I, 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 my colleagues here are traffic engineers at the highest levels, but I can still feel issues here with the turns, with the north driveway uh, on Ridge Road, things like that. That traffic light is a sight line nightmare. In three accidents in three years, to me, he says, oh, that's nothing. I don't necessarily agree with all this. I'm concerned. He, even though maybe traffic could be better with this project, I'm not totally convinced of that. So, so, so I think there's a, a, a relative uh, consensus that we're going to continue the hearing. Could I have a motion on that? Motion moved. Continue the hearing. Second. When, Second. So when do we meet just so people don't show up on the wrong night? So we meet um, in Two weeks and a day. I think we're. Oh, or, no, today. Two uh, just two weeks. No, it's less. Actually, it's less than, less than two weeks. Days, it's yeah. not the other way around. I'm, the I'm 16th. Getting, yeah, I'm looking into February. Um, so it's the, the normal third Tuesday. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I thought Monday was a holiday. The 16th. 15th is Martin Luther King Day. Oh, right. Is it? 16th, isn't it? 16th is the day after Martin Luther King Day. Is it? Oh, so that is. Uh, get kicked into Wednesday. So 17th? Wednesday. Is it the 16th? Let's check the calendar right there. I think the question is whether the I think it is the 17th on the town calendar because I got the calendar Question is whether we get booted for the town council and we get pushed back a day. What do you think? 17th. It seems like it's exactly two weeks, so it'll be on a Wednesday again. A Wednesday again, two weeks from now. We'd like to thank the commission members and, and, and the neighbors for their yes, comments you. tonight. All, all those in favor, we have a motion. Did we get the second? I, I think the second, yep. Thank you. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right. So we'll see you in two weeks.
All right, anybody need a break? Seven. Wednesday the 17th. Is it snowing yet? <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be snowing in a Sorry. <laughs> it's getting very close to mine, too. I'm just glad we don't get the phone calls anymore. Yeah. I get them. We've ever. No. I get them. No, I'll try to get done before 11. Yeah. So I get the loser. Yeah. used to be a rule if you can't get it out, I'm out of here. <laughs> Do they? Again. What's it all? I'm trying so hard. I know. Yeah, I can hear it. Are you mad? Notes here, man. Oh, yeah. Very, very, very thorough. Yeah, yeah. It's very oh, professional, yeah. aren't you? Very.
Alrighty then, let's move on to the third item on the agenda tonight, item 3.3, a public hearing again for application number 1968-17-Z. I, I'm not sure exactly how to pronounce this. Midas, Midas Hospitality LLC seeking a special permit in accordance with section 3.2.2, 5.2, 6.1, and 6.2 of the Weathersfield Zoning Regs to construct a 10,000 square foot daycare facility and associated site improvements. On parcel ID 236013, uh, we are talking at 1330 Silas Dean Highway. So good evening. Why don't you uh, start by giving us a summary of what's going on. Uh, good evening, Commission members. For the record, Kevin Johnson, Close Jensen and Miller. Uh, with me also is Corey Garrow of Close, Close Jensen and Miller and Mr. Vid Mitta, uh, owner and applicant. Um, given the lateness of the hour, any questions? <laughs> <laughs> nice try. <laughs> <Not true. laughs> Will there be any children in this room? <laughs> yeah, no, 2.4 children max, right? <laughs> Uh, just a couple housekeeping matters first. Um, this is a public hearing. We did mail the certificates of mailing. We did turn those into staff, I believe, a week and a half, two weeks ago. Um, second item, we did receive numerous uh, staff comments uh, last week. Uh, we have been working on those comments, given the holidays and so forth. Um, we didn't finish until late this afternoon. What we just handed out were revised plans uh, in response to staff comments as well as our responses to staff comments. Uh, those comments being town engineer, zoning enforcement, fire marshal, <coughs> and planning. Um, so again, our intent is to sit down with staff, go over some of the comments. I would say we're in agreement with probably 95% of the comments and have incorporated those into the plan. Um, but again, we wanted you to be able to have a set of plans to look at is to go along because the plans on the boards are slightly different than what was in your application package. So just a couple of housekeeping <coughs> items. Uh, I'm sure you all know uh, where this property is or where these properties are. Uh, we're on Executive Square on the south side, uh, I-91 being to the top of the sheet, uh, direction north to the left. Uh, Red Lobster and Silestine Highway is to the bottom of the sheet. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Can can you see or do you want me to move these boards? Can can you see? Okay. Well, well I can't. I can no, stand up. I can't. You want me to move them forward? Okay. <laughs> sorry, I'm, Kevin. I'm sorry. <laughs> Kevin, you're too tall, so you can see over these things. <laughs> sorry. So again, this is three parcels of land, um, 1330 Executive Square is Comfort Inn. Um, the middle parcel is a parcel owned by Eversource Energy. And the third parcel, again, moving closest to Interstate 91, is a vacant parcel of land also owned by Mr. Mitta. The easternmost is currently a parking lot which services Comfort Inn. Uh, Eversource is vacant, it's grass strip. Um, collectively, uh, it's about 3.7 acres of land. It's fairly flat. Uh, there are pockets of 100-year floodplain on uh, two of the parcels. Uh, we do have some wetlands on the easternmost parcel. Uh, we have been to uh, inland wetlands, we did receive erosion and certification, uh, erosion and sedimentation certification from wetlands, uh, and we also went to design review. Uh, we do not have final architectural plans. The architectural plans that were part of your application package 
Uh, we're from a Shrewsbury facility, which Mr. Mitta just completed. Uh, so pending approval from this board, uh, he will commence with final architecturals for this site. Um, but basically it's a franchise operation, so again, it's a prototypical uh, treatment. So, so could I just confirm, so you have all your permits, both from ourselves and the state? Did I? No, just, from, just from Inland Wetlands. And and design, we've been to design review. Yeah, we have to go back to design review. Environmentally, the permits, you you have wetlands on the site. Do you have your wetland permit? Yes. You do, completely. And okay. erosion and sedimentation and certification. Do you have to go to the, and do you have to go to the state? You said 100-year flood? No. Just, no? So you're all set? No. From, from an no. environmental standpoint, you're all set? Right. Thanks. We do have to go to OSTA. You have to go to? OSTA. Yes. But we'll, we'll get to that. Um, and just another housekeeping matter, um, we started this project maybe a couple years ago um, because Eversource Energy is the center parcel. Uh, we did a conceptual plans, refined that um, to a more complete set of parking plans minus the daycare at the time. Um, we needed Eversource's concurrence before we could make application to this board. Uh, so it took Eversource almost a year to review those plans and issue the license agreement. But we do have, Mr. Mitta is in receipt of the license agreement, so they are on board. Um, any changes, part of that license agreement, any changes that we made to the plans, we do have to <coughs> resubmit to Eversource, so we will be doing that. Um, so basically, what we're proposing to do is uh, the parking that's currently on the easternmost parcel, and that parcel of land has now been given a street address by the engineering department. That's currently now known as 88 Executive Square. So that's how I'll refer to that tonight. Um, at the time we submitted plans, we did not have that street address, so we were referring to it as parcel ID numbers. Um, Basically, we're taking the parking that's currently on 88 Executive Square, shifting that onto the Eversource parcel, uh, redoing the front entrance way, uh, the Port Cochere area, new drive access on the Comfort Inn, and on 88 Executive Square, constructing a new daycare. And the daycare is going to be a 10,000 square foot building. It will have to the rear uh, a playground area, about 4,500 square feet. Um, access to the parking on the Eversource parcel, we're reconfiguring uh, curb cuts on Executive Square. So we're going to have a new <coughs> driveway entrance to that new parking uh, area on the Eversource parcel. Uh, two double bays of parking, 24 foot wide aisles. Uh, on the daycare, be two curb cuts from Executive Square, basically one-way direction, one-way in, one-way out. Uh, at the exit, you'd be forced to, with signage and the direction, the angle of the driveway to go around the traffic circle uh, in the cul-de-sac there at Executive Square. Um, there is a history of trucks that stay at the Comfort Inn. Um, we're going to continue to accommodate those vehicles. Uh, so we've designed the site so that they, the trucks can enter the Eversource parcel, uh, basically make a U back into the parking area to the rear of the daycare. So at night, that could hold four uh, trucks uh, during the okay. day. Kevin, point this out. No, I'm gonna point. I know what you're doing, but point it out. Okay. So, so any, every, hopefully everyone can hear me. Uh, so trucks would enter the Eversource parcel. They could either pull straight in or they could make this U-turn back in and then pull out and exit to Executive Square. So during the daytime, these parking spaces would be used by staff of the daycare. The overnight hours, it could accommodate four tractor trailers. Um, you know, time-wise, 
hotel staff would have to tell truckers that they need to be out of there by 6.30 in the morning when the day care staff starts to come in. Um, so those parking spaces are going to have a dual use. You mean kids are going to be out in that? During the day. No, the, no, the yeah. daycare operates daycare, right? basically 6.30 a.m. to 6.30 p.m. Truckers would come in. Their parking is there. Correct. The, 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 the employees. Right. Of the daycare. No, the trucks are not employees. No, 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 but the... Oh, employ the staff employees of the daycare. During the day? During the day, it's employees of the daycare, correct? Staff. Yeah, oh, okay. Yeah, that's what I asked. Okay. Right. I, mis I misunderstood. Um, there is fencing all around the daycare building itself and around the playground. Um, uh, we do have tabulations for the zoning data on the site plan. Uh, I believe we're in conformance to the setbacks. Um, Coverages, impervious co building coverage, uh, we're in compliance. Impervious coverage, we've actually dropped the impervious coverage amount on the comfort in parcel. Obviously, on the Eversource parcel, the impervious coverage went up. On the daycare parcel, we're actually below what's allowed. If you average the daycare and the Eversource parcel, we're just slightly below the 75% uh, coverage that's allowed. So. We've tried to in incorporate as much green space uh, as possible on those parcels. Uh, in terms of grading and drainage, again, I mentioned the site, all three sites are fairly uh, flat. Uh, we're trying to approximate those existing grades with the proposed grading. Um, I did mention there's 100 pockets of 100-year floodplain. Uh, we're filling approximately nine cubic yards of the existing floodplain, but we're creating compensatory storage of approximately 13 yards. So we have a net gain, plus or minus four cubic yards uh, of flood storage. Um, Again, the parking lot on the Eversource parcel, it's basically a series of highs and lows. Uh, catch basins at the low points, we're collecting the storm runoff as well as from the daycare parcel, uh, directing it through a uh, Vortechnic type structure for water quality. From there, we have subsurface stormwater detention underneath the parking in the rear of the daycare. And then from there, it discharges to an existing 24-inch pipe that discharges on property of Executive Square itself. Um, we have been in contact with the property owner of Executive Square. Um, our research has shown there's not a drainage easement on that parcel uh, to provide maintenance and so forth on that 24-inch pipe. Um, I was contacted by their attorney. Uh, they asked for the drainage report, uh, drainage area map. We provided that. We're waiting to hear back. Uh, what they did tell us was the owners of Executive Square are willing to work with us. They're not trying to impede anything uh, that Mr. Mitt is trying to do. But again, we're waiting for feedback on, on their review. Uh, all other utilities for the daycare would be provided uh, from existing systems in Executive Square, water, fire services, sanitary sewer, uh, electrical, and so forth. Uh, in terms of landscaping, um, we're, we're preserving uh, the existing plantings on the east side of the Comfort Inn, and, and this proposal is not doing anything on the west side of Comfort Inn. Everything is confined to the east side. Um, so all the existing plantings on the east side of Comfort Inn are remaining, as well as on the south side uh, of the property. Um, we are uh, including proposing new street trees. Um, we, again, 
We've prepared this landscape plan uh, with Eversource for their review. We obviously have restrictions with Eversource because we're directly below their high tension line. So we have height restrictions on plants. We're limited to what we can put in there. Um, so species, again, are on the small nature. Basically, the islands uh, within the Eversource parcel have about a 12-foot tall tree and an evergreen type ground cover planting in the islands. Along the street uh, for Comfort Inn and the daycare, we're in a street trees of about a 35 foot height. Um, again, I mentioned there's wetlands to the east. Uh, we're providing, we're going to be removing invasive vegetation there, planting some native plantings, uh, some native grasses uh, in that area. Um, as part of your application package, there was a letter from myself uh, requesting landscape waivers. Uh, I admit it's quite a list, um, probably one of the longest lists I've ever had, but I think when you look at these three parcels, you'll understand why some of them are, why, are required. I'm not going to go through all of them. A lot of them are repeated from site to site. But just so you get an idea of what I was up against, between the Comfort Inn and the other source parcel, the property line goes right down the middle of the asphalt pavement. So I, there's no way I could achieve the five foot landscape buffering on both sides. Tree species, perimeter landscaping, I couldn't achieve that. These are some of the things that led to that laundry list. And I mean, if, if you want me to go through them all, I could, but I think a lot of them are self-explanatory. Some have to do with the width of the islands, um, some with the area. Um, so I'll, I'll leave it at that for now. Do you have a, I, I see you have a question. I'm sure at some point we'll talk about have you done as much as you can about landscaping in general, but I'm sure the list will still be very long. Yes. To your, to your point. The, the short answer is yes. <laughs> Did you reduce any of it? I mean, was it longer at one point? It is the biggest I've ever seen in 40 years. Um, no, I, was, I did not reduce it. And, and, and actually, I must confess, I did miss one, parking within the front yard setback. And Mr. Gillespie pointed that out. Um, I think the reason I missed that one, on the Comfort Inn parcel, there's seven existing spaces that are forward of the front yard setback today. We added three more here and three there. And my apologies, this one's on me. I, I missed that one. I picked up on the loading docks and the screening of the loading docks, but I missed the obvious. So. I am requesting a waiver for parking in the front yard setback. Um, in terms of lighting, <clears throat> again, everything is confined to the east side of Comfort Inn, the north and the south side, and then the Eversource parcel. And um, the daycare parcel. Uh, basically, it's all new fixtures, um, mounting heights of 12 or 18 feet. Uh, they're LED fixtures. Um, and this area right here, underneath and approaching the port cochere, is going to be bollard type lights, three and a half foot high. Uh, again, the bollards are LEDs. I would liken that there are. As part of the application package, there's details of what the lights look like. Uh, I liken them to a sleek shoebox. Um, they're very slim, um, but they are um, arm-mounted. They're not a post-mounted luminaire. They're, they're mounted with the arms. Uh, probably going to be a bronze finish. Um, let's see. 
Uh, erosion and sedimentation control, I did touch on that. We did go to wetlands. Uh, we have the standard erosion control, silt fencing, hay bale dams, silt sacks at catch basins, stone construction entrances, uh, narratives for, for both during and post construction activities. Uh, there's seating mixtures on the plans. Um, I think at this point I'm going to let Corey just touch on traffic and then I'll uh, continue. Can I ask you a question? Certainly. Could, is it reasonable considering, you know, the middle parcel ever source? You can't apply trees, height, and, and you need to do variances because that site can't be developed in a normal fashion. Correct. And so that contributes to the parcel you really want to develop for the daycare, mm -hmm. but do you consider that a, on its own almost reasonable um, without, you know, and it is not contributing to the, too many of the variances. You right. see, I think, you th see what I'm getting at? Right. I mean, if, if it was not owned by Eversource, we would probably combine all the parcels and, and a lot of these waivers would go away. Yeah. But again, just based on the nature of the parcel and, and we can't combine it, um, that's why I, the, the list is very long and I admit it's a long list. Uh, I, I would also think that development with Eversource of this or the use of it, let's put it that way, um, might be one of the first times it's been done along the Eversource uh, line in Weathersfield. We've certainly utilized it before, 1260 comes to mind, but not the full this width. Way. Not Not the full not width. Not in a developed Por sense. Portions I of think. it. Portions of it, right. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, for the record, Corey Garrow, Close Johnson and Miller. Before I give you a um, uh, summary of the traffic, I did want to mention something about the drainage uh, the existing system out there and all the parcels all the way from uh, the Silas Dean to the back today have no water quality measures at all. What we're doing is we're not only treating the water that we're creating in this new development, we're also treating the water that comes off of the Red Lobster and the gas station and everything else that ties into a 24-inch line is going to get cleaned up as part of this process. I just wanted to mention that, that that's something that it's a major plus for this area. Uh, you probably all have copies of the traffic report. It was uh, produced by Bubaris Traffic Associates. Um, and again, uh, the building is a 10,000 square foot building. The capacity of this school is 185 children. Access to the um, facility will be uh, two driveways from Executive Square, one in and one out, right around the cul-de-sac. Um, there is short-term parking in front of the building, which will serve for drop-off and pickups for the parents during those 6.30 to 9.30 and then 4 to 6.30 in the afternoon. The primary Access to the entire area is obviously that intersection of Silas Dean Highway, uh, uh, Executive Square, and there's also a commercial site on the west side of Silas Dean Highway for a four-way intersection, lighted intersection. Um, as I just said, the AM peak hours for the daycare are 6.30 to 9.30. The PM peak hour is from 4 to 6.30. Uh, the average drop-off uh, and pickup is roughly five, six minutes or so for each parent. <coughs> Typically, according to uh, the history of these places, it's usually 80% occupied. And typically, again, according to history, 
20% of the families have more than one sibling going to, this, to the school, to the daycare. Uh, Mr. Bubar and his company did manual counts <clears throat> in mid-November of this year. And then he projected those existing volumes 2% to accommodate for the, to the 2019 opening date of the facility. 2% is what's re recommended by DOT on these. Um, as far as site generated traffic, there were several uh, sources that were used. One of them is the ITE uh, generation rates. Another, there's a Cromwell site with this specific daycare um, that exists on uh, Cromwell. It's uh, the uh, learning experience. And, uh, and also we got data from the corporate learning experience folks as to what their history is of traffic. Um, based on all those sources, the, it comes out that there's 70 trips in and 70 trips out during the a.m. and p.m. peak hour. Using those volumes, I uh, won't go through all the details, but using those volumes and everything that he did on the Silas Dean, it turns out that in conclusion, there's really no change to the traffic uh, level of services for that intersection, which are basically A, excellent, and B, very good. So in that regards, there's no impact whatsoever to the existing traffic out there. This will have to go to OSTA because it is certified as a major traffic generator the entire area so any traffic uh, reports have to be approved by osta and the certificate has to be uh, revised so that's in that's it for me yes sir um the shared parking uh, between Comfort Inn and Red Lobster, correct? Yeah, there's existing. Works well, on the most congested times, weekends. As far as I know. Okay. The, and there's also going, there's going to be shared shared tra um, weekends. parking between the daycare and Comfort Inn. And Comfort Inn. Yeah, so there'll be shared parking in the entire area. Okay. So, are you the one to go through that, or? I was thinking, Kevin, somebody was going to actually run through the shared, the shared volumes or quantities. Are you going to run through that, or is that something we're going to share? Volumes or quantities? Sh shared. No, they, 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 they share them because, because the Red Lobster doesn't have enough parking. Right. Are you so gonna, they share with understand, Comfort Inn. I, I guess I was waiting for the shared discussion about no. how many. I don't know. I think there's like 59 spots. being shared. I think we have a, on the one of the uh, charts, but I don't know the exact number. Yeah, I mean, I saw a lot of numbers, but I didn't understand <coughs> yeah. how it all worked. And I didn't- How with this? Yeah, I didn't try because I figured it would be part of the presentation. Each, each one well, requires X, but well, they're at different times of day, so. What we, what we did was we, we have a tabulation uh, for Red Lobster based on seating, what they require, what they have on site, and what they need to share or borrow on the Comfort Inn parcel. Mm -hmm. We also tabulated rooms for the Comfort Inn and then what the daycare needs. So when we say shared parking, I mean, this isn't something like the Borden where we didn't have enough and, you know, we did the analysis and so forth. We actually have enough collectively Do you? for all of these. We actually have an excess of what we need. So when we say shared parking, it just means each parcel can use parking on one another. We're not short of parking. Fair enough. Okay. So it's all common Thank you. parking. It's common parking. It's like convenience thing. Right. Correct. It's not where you're looking for an accommodation based on some theory that people right. aren't eating at Red Lobster at the same time they're sleeping. <laughs> right. No. No, we we don't have an in-depth analysis of that nature. I, I I went down and asked the clerk in the Red Lobster, based upon 
her knowledge and experience, we don't know what that is, she said, I said, do you have any problems parking any longer? They used to there. She says, yeah, once in a while we still do, but uh, it's not a big a deal in her mind, whatever good that is. So, so how many do you need for those three establishments, and how many do you have? And if you do have more, is there an opportunity for more green space? There we go, right? <laughs> <laughs> the answer is yes and no. I mean, we, we do, our, our tabulation, we need 256 for the three uses. We have 269, which slightly varies from what your application package was because addressing one of the comments, truck traffic, and we had to shave, manipulate some parking. The reason we have extra is Again, the four trucks that we could accommodate behind uh, the daycare, if there is a chance that one of those vehicles cannot pull out and free up parking by 6.30 in the morning, the truck could pull into one of these spaces temporarily um, to allow the staff to come in. So that's why we, we built in some extra. If there's some heartburn over that, we could delete some parking and create some more green space. I, I'm probably still going to need a waiver, but I mean, I could also gain some green space on the periphery by going to a 16 foot deep space instead of 18, where I have, I think it's eight feet, Peter, of green space. So I, I could pick up some more green space that way. So there's a couple options if you so desire. I, I don't. I want to stay on that topic. If other folks have questions about it, I have a couple other questions, but it would be a different topic. So jump in if you have other questions on that. It's related. I have a question on the the auto turn that was done for the trucks. Or so trucks are coming in on the north end. Are they coming? Are they going to the to the east? and traveling south and then going around that big island. So yeah, following your, I'm following your finger now. So the trucks are coming here. Truck is coming, they're, down they're turning there. Kevin, it might be easier on the colored uh, version because people can see the island, they, you know, the islands in the, in the. So trucks are coming here, come down this aisle, and then they can do a U and back in and then pull out and then go out. That's with this design vehicle that's in the, in the plane? And that's a WB60, not a WB50. <coughs> okay. It just, a lot of the boxes today are 53 footers. I'm saying it seems tight, that's all. Like the, the trailing tire and then trying to come around. It looks like you're running into the, like I'm, I was actually, I'm actually thinking the opposite of you is that some of these islands are, they're gonna get mounted. And I was wondering if it would be better to trim down some of the, like the two end islands in order to make, because these, these truck paths look very tight. Like, I don't know how a truck that's going um, north to south along that bottom corridor there, if they're, yeah, so if they're going north to south there, doing a Yui around that outside island, that D-shaped island, doesn't doesn't look easy. Yes. I feel like the, that's the gonna, track, I feel like that's gonna get mounted. Just gonna, yeah. So just uh, going like to the playground and, then and if I was gonna yeah. add yeah. green I space, I would rather take it. Over. On this radius, and <clears throat> right here, we, we did shave those. I mean, the auto turn that is in the plans here shows shows the truck going into the the little tip of the island up to the north there, up to the east. Sorry, I keep getting turned around. Yeah, it's, it's actually driving into that. So I'm just well, curious if this is the design no, I, vehicle. I think what you're maybe looking at is there's multiple. No, yeah, it's, it's you have the template down for right. the different turns and right. I'm just, it's, it's my, when, as I'm looking at this, I feel like those islands are going to get hit. Trampled. Is my, 
if okay. if this is the design vehicle, I'm sure truck drivers are better than what I'm imagining, but because they're that's probably the most extreme. Truck, truck most drivers extreme. always get in to places that I. That's the longest you're going to see can, too. But, um, but yeah, it's kind of one of those that's on the right. upper limit. Yeah. So most of them are going to be 99 percent will be smaller than that, but that's just the show. Yeah, sure. and, and as long as you know, there's no other cars in their way, and it just seems. I'd rather take an island out, even though it's part of the town regulations, add more green space to the outside or something. He's already asking for a massive number of waivers, so what's a so little what's bit what's more, a right? couple, I mean, it's couple just, more? Just uh, add a 40th page or something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but that's, you know, if I just had a general comment, I'm, I'm trying to track <coughs> these auto turn templates, and it seems <clears throat> like the islands are a little tight. In general, okay. but back to Kevin. What about the um, existing parking in where the daycare is? The front is being used by the elderly housing project, right there, about there. Yeah, I believe today they do use some spaces, and they won't now. That's it, they, they won't now. Do they need it? They got a lot of parking. I've been out there a couple times, and this parking area is 50% empty. So I, yeah. I don't know if they oh, it's, that. It's just, convenient. I was just going to say, I think they okay. use it because it's convenient gotcha. to, the, to the road. Yeah. That's my guess. So, so do I understand that <clears throat> that's, that blue is, or that aqua is, the play area? That, that's the play area. My okay. understanding is it's a rubberized surface. Okay. And, and, is and again, it, there's fencing all the way around the entire building and play area. Okay. Is is what I see up in, in the upper right hand corner up against the highway, that's the uh, behind the truck <coughs> parking, that's the uh, uh, rubbish gated? Is that that's the trash enclosure, correct? Yeah, okay. And it's going to be surrounded by a six foot PVC fencing. All the usual. There's no issues with emission or noise off the highway on the children in the playground. It's, it's like within a hundred feet of it. Soothing. Yeah, I. I just know when you do a when you do a school. I know, I know it's private. But when you do a school, that's taken into consideration. Or we put playgrounds or windows. Hey Dave, you want to put up in the DOT, put up a new billion dollar barrier? Yeah. No. I'm just okay. asking if it's been looked at. Apparently <laughs> that's not something that we have to look into. I don't know if the corporate has any studies on that. Uh, yeah, hey. Just a couple comments on uh, architecture. Again, I'm, I'm not an architect, but again, this is a prototypical. But you, but you stayed at the Holiday Inn next door. Prototypical floor plan. Holiday Inn Express. This is a Shrewsbury facility. Um, you know, front entrance. Uh, I think there are some different prototype footprints. The Crown facility, you enter on uh, the side. But again, on this directory from front and, and this is the playground area. Uh, basically there's an infant playground and you know preschool playground. Uh, hip roofs. Uh, in terms of materials and colors, uh, we went to the Promo facility. Uh, oh, yeah, it's a question. You're slow. We have to use the board to design review. So th these are photos of the existing parking areas. The bottom photos are of the Crown facility. So again, we just took this to give you a flavor of colors, materials, uh, <coughs> shingles, brick, uh, skirt boards uh, along the base, uh, clapboard siding, vinyl windows. Uh, you know, it looks like uh, taupe, various shades of taupe uh, for colors. And then, of course, the, the entrance uh, overhang and the numbers and letters and the bright, bright colors. Uh, so that's, 
that's the typical. Uh, and Kevin, treatment. design review uh, required you to come back when you have the final that's specific correct. site details for that. That's correct. Okay. Um, so again, um, as I mentioned, we received staff comments uh, last week. Uh, we did work to address uh, those comments. We're probably in agreement with 95% of them. Um, there's a couple items on drainage I think that Corey wants to discuss with Mr. Greger. One comment I do um, want to address We developed these plans, we developed multiple concepts, and we went back and forth uh, with the learning experience. And for the number of parking spaces, we only need two handicaps. The learning experience wanted three. They wanted those spaces across the drive aisle in this area here. Drop off with children on both sides of the front entrance door. Um, I believe staff comment, a couple staff comments were basically to flip that put the handicaps on this side and put the drop-offs here. We're not in agreement with that. I, I, I know accessible routes, you know, access to front doors for accessible routes <coughs> feet and so forth, but in our opinion and the learning experience's opinion, it's better to have the children drop off closest to the front door. If they were here, then you've got children crossing the drive aisle. There's a greater chance of vehicular and pedestrian conflict. And we do not want that. So, what's the age range again for the kids? Infants to six years. To six years. To six years. So some of them can potentially be walking across there on their own, right? Correct. So, our preference again, we haven't had a chance to discuss with staff, but the learning experience and ours is to keep the plan, the handicap where we have it. There's less turnover with the handicaps. I don't think there's going to be a need for parents, three handicapped parents at a time continue, that are handicapped. I think it's maybe for a couple staff members that might have use for a handicapped space, so it's going to be a lower turnover. We just think what we're proposing is safer, and I think experience of the learning experience knows that as well. So, um, so Kevin, the final arbiter of that will be the building official, not, not the town engineer and not, not myself. So okay. you can disagree with me. It's the building official you're going to have to. And I think the language in the code is has got some flexibility. You know, it's, it's something to the extent, you know, the most proximal and reasonable. I mean, there's something in there. So I think maybe if you can provide, you know, a summary of the concerns about traffic safety and the children and, and all of that, it it might well, ring I think <coughs> it did in through. response to comments. Okay. Yeah. It, you know, just um, what's going through my mind on that topic is do each of the, does, does the learning center site have all the requisite parking that it requires absent access? In other words, you can't get to the back for the staff parking without going on the CLMP property. But numerically, are all the spots there? Is that something that you were striving for? And where I'm heading here is, is there another solution where you put the Handicap, handicap parking in the first bay of the seal and P area and nobody's crossing vehicular traffic yeah. are you you know what you you know where I'm thinking where I'm looking right it, it just just that's, I, I think that's something we'd have to discuss with our client in the learning experience if you needed to put it all on the learning experience property per se it wouldn't be a solution but if you're shared parking and just to do, throwing it out there. To, to answer your question, does it have enough parking? Um, they need 40, we have 36. Okay. So hence the need for the shared parking. Um, I think that's, that's the extent that's of my comments. I think I touched on the highlights. So is there anybody from the public who has any questions on this? Doesn't look like it. <laughs> we had one person and he left. I have a question, quick one. Uh, one of the two dumpsters next to the motel and uh, a lot of wood pallets down. Is it, you doing work in there? 
You have to, you have to identify yourself. Oh, okay. I thought so. Thanks. For the record, that was Mr. Mitta. Yeah, they're doing right away. Did okay. you want it? Give it again for yeah, her. My name is Vid Mitta. V-I-D. Okay. So um, I think I think what I kind of got from your opening discussion is that we, the staff has just received responses, right? So there really needs to be much like the last application, some time for staff to review it, right? Correct. <laughs> so um, we might as well be doing the same thing and leaving the hearing open until next time. Um, and then you can come back with any additional thoughts. Uh, my initial reaction is it seems pretty straightforward. If we can do something about trimming the islands and maybe, you know, I, I don't know, maybe some of the other ones can be thickened up, I don't know. But it, again, it's a long list. It's gonna be a long list. Is it the end of the world? Not, not really, but I would tend to leave that to staff and you to figure out personally. Um, I tried my best to include as much green as I could. Again, that's that's what I, your job is supposed to be, right? It's <laughs> again, I could look at a 16-foot depth on some of the periphery ones and, and get some more green space that way. I expect blacktop from Corey. I expect green space from you. <laughs> it's a constant battle with engineers. <laughs> and um, they always put drainage pipes through my islands underneath my trees. I know. It's, it's, it's crazy. crazy. I constantly have to train them. Um, Tom, I'll make the motion to keep this open then. Second. Uh, or before. Um, I'm just going to ask, are there topics that they should come back prepared to answer next time that anybody thinks? I think are? you beat the green space issue to death. I think Ryan has some good points and they've been attended to, but okay. I don't see anything else we have to talk on. Peter's 20-page package was very thorough and very complete when he gave it to us. And the follow-up that you just handed it to us tonight gives okay. Peter another couple of weeks of work to do. <laughs> All right, so if everybody's comfortable with that, Tony made, uh, made a motion. Yeah, I may second it. You want to second it, George? All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right. We'll see you two weeks. Two weeks. We know okay. it's two weeks now. Thank you. We um, don't We have minutes, and we also have a crog thing. Do we have to do it so I guess uh, this is kind of timely. We owe Krog some members. members. One, do we need one and a backup? Okay. Anybody remember who was the Krog? Kroggers. I think I, think I remember Jim, Jim Hughes's name. <laughs> I Jim Hughes. Backup. Oh, you were the alternate? <laughs> was it Tony Marsh? Ah, you, get, you should get a promotion. Would anybody, like, would anybody like to do it? Wasn't it Ryan? Was it me? Yeah, it was you. I think yeah. it was. I was in back I would uh, I would nominate uh, I'll rely on Ryan. I, I would nominate <laughs> Ryan and Jim Hughes to continue in that stead. <laughs> to continue our stellar job. There is a meeting uh, January eighteenth. Yeah. And then March tomorrow. May, <laughs> September and November. Would anybody like to second my recommendation? I'll second the, rec the nomination. <laughs> Thank you. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? It's not enough, so. I already added it to my uh, to All right. calendar. Uh, yeah. right. uh, we do have minutes from the last time around. <clears throat> uh, did anybody? George, did you have any thoughts on the, uh, the minutes? Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right. Anything else, Peter? We have a couple applications coming up. We do. We have uh, the uh, Weathersfield Country Club is uh, putting up some safety poles and nets. So they actually started it, uh, and uh, we uh, required them to come in for a permit. And then um, the gas uh, auto establishment up on the Berlin Turnpike, their permit expired, so they will be uh, attending your next meeting as well. We may have one other non-public hearing item that we may be able to accommodate, but uh, that remains that remains to be seen. And then obviously the carryovers from tonight. So, so these may not be ready for the next one. Uh, these two will. There may be a, one other, but we'll make that call. Okay. Shortly. And, and this is the one on the corner of Knott Street. Yes. Thank you. 
that truck is parked there again. Not, not, not quite as close to the corner, but still. All right. Uh, anything else? Peter, can you thank Justin oh. for the efforts? That